epilepsy warning for flashing lights and colors. Hey everyone, it's Peter from Theme Park Crazy. Well, the viewers have spoken, and welcome to my first compilation video. Now, for those of you who voted no, no worries, this isn't going to be a trend. I'm not going to start prioritizing re-uploads over new content, and I still have a new video along the way about Marine World Africa USA. But now that it's the off-season, and let's be honest, YouTube isn't as lively as it is during the actual theme park season when people want to go outside, I want to be on the good side of YouTube's algorithm, so I want to try a few new things out. And one of them is something that I've noticed a lot of channels doing. I'm going to put all of my animatronic videos together in one single compilation. That way you could use it as background noise or to help you go to sleep, which is ironic because the animatronics are supposed to be scary, but you know what? I have friends who fall asleep to horror game playthroughs, so it's not weird at all. But anyways, this is called two hours of animatronics and not two hours of Peter yapping, so let's get on with the compilation. Thank you for watching and enjoy! Though water is essential to life itself, it can also be quite terrifying. This is especially true when you submerge animatronics in it. The idea of being in the water with the twisting gears, sharp edges, and often terrifying imagery of these machines creates the ultimate nightmare fuel. In recent weeks, the general fear of submerged machines, aka submechanophobia, has been gaining steam on places like Reddit and TikTok. And with animatronics being an essential part of the theme park industry, I figured it was time to give this subject my list of top 10 treatment. So as voted on by the fans, here are the top 10 scariest underwater animatronics to give you some mechanophobia. Number 10, The Crocodile, located at England's Watermouth Castle. Found in Devon County, England, Watermouth Castle is a small family theme park with a lot going for it. This park is centered around a large historical dwelling built all the way back in 1825. Among its surrounding attractions is a series of rides and curios for the whole family to enjoy. One of the main features of this park is an array of animatronic figures for guests to check out. Among these figures are gnomes, anthropomorphic animals, and a truly unsettling crocodile. Placed behind a stone wall and a caged window, this croc is shrouded in darkness until it surfaces. The only movement this creature seems to make is rising out of the water, and the only sound it makes is the water dripping off of it. The sheer simplicity of its design somehow makes it even creepier, and the lack of lighting only adds to its bone-chilling appearance. It just goes to show that when it comes to inciting fear in submechanophobics, sometimes less is more. Number 9. The Sea Serpent and the Giant Squid located on the defunct submarine voyage ride at California's Disneyland. Just because Disneyland is called the happiest place on Earth doesn't mean it's never had anything creepy in it. Through the park's history, it's certainly had its fair share of unsettling attractions, perhaps enough for their own video. There's the Haunted Mansion, the original Alice in Wonderland ride, the now defunct Underwear Museum, and of course, the famous submarine voyage. Built on the former spot of the failed Phantom Boats ride, guests would board a submarine and were taken on a journey into the deep seas, encountering several undersea creatures along the way. These included sharks, mermaids, and a terrifying deep sea giant squid. Admittedly, video of this squid is pretty hard to come by, especially since it was found in a dark portion of the ride. This squid utilized compressed air and wires to move its tentacles, giving it an unnervingly lifelike appearance. But this wasn't the only notable attraction on this ride. The submarine would come across a sea serpent. Its long, scaly body would be shown at first, building up tension before guests come in contact with the face. Its big, bulging eyes and frozen, open mouth facial expression has been described as cute by some, and creepy by others. Outside of the water, this serpent is often considered to be far friendlier looking than it does underwater. But what do you think? Is this serpent creepy or cute? Number 8. The Swimming Dino from Tennessee's Jurassic Boat Ride it's needless to say that the city of Pigeon Forge, Tennessee is all about tourism. From its many dinner shows to its world-renowned theme park Dollywood, this southern city has quite a lot of charm to it. Everywhere you turn, there's something new to check out. And one of these attractions is perhaps the most terrifying boat ride in the country. Just a short walk away from the Alcatraz East Crime Museum is a standalone boat ride attraction called Jurassic Boat Ride. This dark ride sits passengers in a small boat, taking them through a dark, spine-tingling adventure through a prehistoric jungle. With ferocious dinosaurs and creepy crawlies, this ride is chock full of scares to keep you on edge, and it's like something straight out of a creepypasta. Just look at the jaw of this T-Rex. Holy shit. 
Though most of the dinosaurs aren't actually in the water, one mysterious creature was able to make this list. Towards the middle of the ride, a mysterious dinosaur head emerges from the water, baring its teeth at boats passing by. The fact that it gets so close to the boat is made even more startling by the devilish red light that shines upon it. Unfortunately, this animatronic reportedly stopped working around 2015. However, it still sits in the water to this day, with only the top of its head still visible from the boat. Overall, if you feel like giving your kids nightmares, I highly recommend a ride on this. Number 7. Nuckin, located on the defunct Maelstrom ride at Florida's Epcot. Since 1982, Epcot has been one of the most significant parks in the Disney World Resort. In addition to Future World, Epcot also features the World Showcase. Here you can find pavilions based on various countries around the world. A few years after the park's opening, the World Showcase would see the debut of the Norway Pavilion. This celebration of all things Scandinavia featured a wide variety of shops and restaurants, along with its star attraction Maelstrom. Named after a powerful whirlpool, this boat ride served as the ultimate tribute to Norwegian history and mythology. Guests would encounter Vikings, polar bears, and a few trolls. Towards the middle of the ride, one segment involved a three-headed troll angrily banishing guests from his territory. Right next to this irate fellow is a creature known as a Nukken. According to Norwegian mythology, the Nukken is a water spirit that lures people to their deaths in lakes and streams. On Maelstrom, this creature is portrayed by a submerged animatronic with what appear to be branches on its head. What makes the Nukken especially creepy is the bright yellow eyes that peer at guests through the dark. Even worse, the boat stops upon his appearance, before being sent backwards by the three-headed troll. This gives guests even more time to look at his bright, piercing stare. This guy surely must have given kids nightmares during its original run. Sadly though, this impressive dark ride was recently closed in 2014. Maelstrom was completely refurbished and rethemed to Frozen Ever After. The Nukken and the three-headed troll would be replaced by Queen Elsa. While Frozen Ever After is absolutely incredible on its own, it's still unfortunate that Maelstrom had to close for it. Number 6. The Sea Monster, located on the I Corsari ride at Italy's Gardaland. Perhaps the most notable theme park in Italy is the incredible Gardaland. This park is jam-packed with colorful and extravagant attractions for everyone to enjoy. From the ornate family rides to the wonderfully themed roller coasters, every attraction stands out. This is also true for the dark ride I Corsari. Think of this boat ride as the Italian equivalent of Pirates of the Caribbean. Like the aforementioned Disney ride, guests will go on a swashbuckling adventure with decorative set pieces and animatronics. Most of these figures are tame, but one in particular is a big old bucket of nope for submechanophobics. Towards the middle of the ride, you'll spot a serpent-like tail sticking out of the water. Then, as if ascending from the watery depths of Davy Jones' locker, an aquatic hellspawn rises out of the water. Aquaphobics will gaze in horror as water spews forth from its mouth. After emerging, this creature will bear its face to the riders. The combination of its human-like face and puppet-like mouth makes its appearance particularly discomforting. Some passengers may say it's so scary, it'll make them wish they could scroll down to the comment section in real life. There's not much else to say about this dude, except you may be seeing him in your nightmares tonight. Number 5. The Shark Attack from the Hollywood Tour Ride at Germany's Phantasialand Phantasialand is well known by thrill seekers for its excellent selection of roller coasters. However, it's also home to various other attractions, including a water-based dark ride. This ride, named Hollywood Tour, takes parkgoers through the classic motion pictures of old. Starting off with an introduction by the animatronic of legendary director Alfred Hitchcock, you'll find yourself whisked away through several famous movies, including King Kong, The Wizard of Oz, and Steven Spielberg's Jaws. The scene begins in a mock New England fishing village, and things seem peaceful at first. As you turn right, though, things take a turn for the worst. A shark fin suddenly appears out of the water, swimming past another animatronic of a fisherman in a yellow yellow raincoat. Suddenly, his boat starts to sink, which is already unsettling enough. But immediately afterwards, a shark will rise out of the water right next to the boat, showing guests its razor-sharp looking teeth. And as if that weren't enough, another shark pops out on the opposite side of the boat to make sure guests on each side of the boat get a piece of the action. So if you're afraid of sharks, and water, and the dark, this ride would be a great exposure therapy. Number 4. Moby Dick Located on the defunct Hunt for Moby Dick ride at Massachusetts Pleasure Island. After the success of Disneyland, several other theme parks started popping up across the country. One of these parks was Pleasure Island in Wakefield, Massachusetts. This park featured two main themed lands. 
a western-themed area, as well as one based on a New England fishing village. The latter featured the park's most famous attraction, The Hunt for Moby Dick. Based on the recently released 1956 Gregory Peck film, this boat ride took guests on an excursion to find and hunt down Moby Dick. Guests would tangle with the rhinoceros, gaze on a few porpoises, and have a close encounter with the legendary white whale himself. For 1959, this animatronic was truly ahead of its time, measuring at an estimated 50 feet long. This massive, ghostly, white animatronic would rise out of the murky water and bare its teeth and the sight of it alone was quite intimidating. According to historian Robert McLaughlin, several past guests say this whale really spooked them as kids, with many saying they won't even go on a whale watch. It was undoubtedly an impressive sight. Unfortunately, during its run at the park, the animatronic would be extremely difficult to maintain. The design was problematic, with the wheels running on what seemed like a trolley track. Unlike roller coasters, the wheels didn't lock onto the track, and with the fiberglass whale being full of air, it would often float off said track. Since the natural pond couldn't be drained, a diver would have to be sent underwater to fix and realign it. Even after holes were drilled into the back to prevent it from floating, the ride was still a maintenance nightmare. Over the course of a decade, this park would quickly lose popularity. Its focus on slower, family-focused rides just couldn't keep up with the increasing demand for thrill rides in the industry. And towards the end of its run, the owners didn't even bother to maintain the whale, and the ride would cease to operate before the park shut down. After deciding the land was more valuable than the park, Pleasure Island's owners would close it down after Labor Day 1969. Nowadays, office buildings and an apartment complex sit on the park's former spot, but the aforementioned pond still remains. Eerily enough, the ramp used to move the whale into the water is still on the property. It is even rumored that the whale itself still sits in the water to this day. By the way, special thanks to Robert McLaughlin for helping me with the research for this segment. He's got some amazing books on Pleasure Island and an entire website about it. If you want to check them out, I've Put links in the description. Number 3. The Drowning Man Located on the Fata Morgana ride at the Netherlands Efteling, there's no doubt that Efteling is one of Europe's most popular theme parks. This park perfectly mixes state-of-the-art attractions with elaborate fantasy theming. Prime examples include the steampunk-themed dive coaster Baron 1898, as well as the surreal Flying Pagoda. But the attraction we're going to talk about right now is the dark ride Fata Morgana. First opening in 1986, this boat ride can be best described as a journey through Middle Eastern folklore. Based on 1001 Arabian Nights, your boat will pass through a wide variety of scenes brought to life by 140 animatronics. You'll feast your eyes on the Sultan's Gold, sail through the marketplace, face off with a giant djinn, and witness the horrors of the torture chamber. Yes, a torture chamber. This scene features a guard with a whip ordering prisoners to work the machines. This is already dark enough, but directly across this scene is where things get even darker. On your right, you'll see a prison cell filled with water. A prisoner can be seen clinging onto the bars, bobbing his head up and down, trying not to drown. Needless to say, this is certainly more unsettling than anything on Pirates of the Caribbean. Now just imagine Imagine it's a small world having a torture chamber. Then again, with that song that plays over and over again, some may say it already is one. Plus, Disney is no stranger to torture chambers. They did distribute Cars 2 into theaters after all. Number 2. The entire Jaws ride at Florida's Universal Studios Orlando and Universal Studios Japan. Based on the movie Jaws, this ride was meant to expand on Universal Studios Hollywood's tram tour experience. This new ride would be insanely complex, putting guests in the water with the film's titular shark. Though Though its initial opening in 1990 suffered from numerous technical difficulties, the ride would be vastly improved upon by 1993. This version is still remembered fondly to this day. This ride centers around guests boarding a boat and taking a scenic cruise around Amity Island. Things go awry though when the Great White Shark himself destroys another tour boat. State-of-the-art animatronics were used to give the shark a highly detailed and bone-chilling appearance. Being surrounded by water with no immediate escape only adds to the ride's terror, and the water's lack of transparency makes the shark's appearances even more startling. Out of the ride's six shark animatronics, two of them in particular are a especially traumatizing. The first occurs in the boathouse, where guests attempt to hide from the shark. I personally remember thinking such a big shark wouldn't fit inside the small boathouse. Just as the boat is about to go outside though, the shark comes charging from the corner, with the interior darkness of the boathouse making him even more terrifying. 
towards the end of the ride, the shark will bite a power line, causing it to be burnt to a crisp. And in all my years on this planet, I've never screamed as hard as I did seeing this electrocuted monstrosity. To the disappointment of many, this ride was not to last, and in 2011, the Florida version would end up being replaced with more Harry Potter attractions. However, a near-exact clone of this ride still exists at Universal Studios Japan to this day, so if you're a fan of the original, a trip to Japan is highly recommended. Before we get to the number one spot, here are a few honorable mentions. First up is Mildred the Crocklebog at England's Bewilderwood. You can see this creature on the Bewilder boat ride. As you sail past her, she will spray water from her nostrils. Though she does look intimidating while submerged, a closer look at the figure reveals that she's much more cute than scary. The park website says, quote, Mildred is really a vegetarian, and she often tries to make friends with butterflies. But people seem to get the wrong impression of her. As such, I simply didn't have the heart to put this lovely lady on the list. She is simply too charming to be scared. Scary, and the park even sells plush toys of her. How could I possibly call this poor girl scary? Next up is the Sea Serpent from the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea ride at Florida's Magic Kingdom. This one just missed making the list. Like Mildred, I also thought this fellow was more cute than scary. Though I must admit, the pictures of it sitting abandoned are absolute nightmare fuel. I mean, geez, this looks like something straight out of the SCP universe. Number 1. Birth of the Bunyip, located at Australia's Murray Bridge. This animatronic won my pole in a landslide. Originating from indigenous Australian mythology, the Bunyip is a mythological water-dwelling creature. Also known as the Mulyawonk, it is said to inhabit areas like swamps, riverbeds, and creeks, coming out at night to devour any human or animal in sight. In 1972, a man named Dennis Newell created his own rendition of the Bunyip as a coin-operated tourist attraction. Over the years, though, the water would eat away at the exterior, leaving it more and more abandoned looking. And as if one of these creatures wasn't enough, the Bunyip was given a baby in 1982 and renamed Bertha. 18 years later though, both the baby and its mother were a truly terrifying pair, with their pupils washed out over the years. These pictures are beyond nightmare fuel. I can't even properly describe how disturbing they look. So to restore it to its former glory, this local treasure was given a major makeover in the year 2000. Nowadays, the Bunyip is much more cartoonish and less scary looking than it was before. On the other hand, it's still extremely popular with the locals, and is ranked as the number one thing to do in Murray Bridge by TripAdvisor. Despite its toned down appearance, there's no doubt that tourists and submechanophobics agree that they wouldn't want to get in the water with this thing. Can't get enough submechanophobia for one video? Feel free to check out Fast Pass Facts video on Disney submechanophobia. This is definitely one of my favorite YouTube channels, and they did a great job with this subject. If you want to check out their video, I've put a link in the description as well. Disney's theme parks are well known for being fun for all ages, but that doesn't mean they don't have some unsettling moments. Over the years, talented Imagineers have been bringing the nightmares with their advanced audio animatronics. After the resounding success of my underwater animatronics video, I figured it was time to go deeper into the subject. So I conducted a few polls with my viewers to determine the scariest Disney park animatronic out there, excluding the ones I've already talked about. And with the help of fellow YouTube channel Fast Pass Facts, we're gonna rank them today. So, as voted on by the viewers, here are the top 15 scariest Disney park animatronics. Before we get started, here's a special shout out to YouTubers John Y. Chen and LMG Vids, who provided much of the footage for this video. They've got some excellent Disney content on their channels, so if you want to check them out, I've put links in the description. Number 15, Karak from Shanghai Disneyland's Roaring Rapids. Shanghai Disneyland is the most recent Disneyland resort to open to the public. As such, it is home to some of the most state-of-the-art attractions out there. These include the world-famous Tron Coaster, the elaborate Pirates of the Caribbean Battle for the Sunken Treasure, and a whitewater raft ride named Roaring Rapids. While these kinds of rides on their own are nothing new, Shanghai Disneyland shakes up the concept with an engaging storyline to go along with it. According to legend, the rivers of Adventure Isle are protected by the Guardian of the Water. This mythical beast takes on the form of a giant crocodile named Karak, who is on a never-ending quest to protect his sacred domain from trespassers. On the way upriver to a base camp, the guest's raft is blocked by a fallen tree, which sends them in the wrong direction. Passengers end up coming face to face with the beast, which is portrayed by one of the largest and most impressive Disney animatronics out there. The fact that his enormous jaw gets so close to the raft is sure to give kids nightmares of being eaten alive. Though reportedly in limited operation, it's impossible to deny the impressive attention to detail on this one. Number 14. 
The Phantom of Henry Ravenswood from Disneyland Paris's Phantom Manor. Out of all the renditions of the famous Disney Park staple The Haunted Mansion, Phantom Manor is widely considered to be the best. First opening with the park in 1992, Phantom Manor made more of an effort to tie into its themed land than its predecessor. Imagineers crafted an engaging backstory for Paris's frontier land. In the 1800s, a prospector named Henry Ravenswood struck gold and thus created the successful mining town of Thunder Mesa. He would also build a high-class manor to live in. Meanwhile, Henry's daughter planned to get married to a train engineer and leave town, which Henry greatly disapproved of. Ravenswood would meet an untimely end in a massive earthquake that would also heavily damage the town. After his death, Ravenswood became a phantom and would kill his daughter's fiancé. Voiced by veteran actor and Big Bad Wolf fan Vincent Price, the phantom makes his appearance towards the end of the ride. The phantom takes the form of a formally dressed man with a skull for a head. With a shovel in his hand, he laughs sadistically as guests descend to their eternal dooms in the afterlife. Until recently, Ravenswood made another appearance near the end of the ride as a rotting cadaver, which was even more chilling than his previous form. Though after a 2019 refurbishment, this animatronic was replaced with another skull-headed phantom. With his badass looks and dapper sense of fashion, this fellow will continue to terrify guests for years to come. Number 13. The Carnotaurus from Animal Kingdom's Dinosaur Despite their habit for unnecessary sequels and unnecessary original movies, dinosaurs are still the textbook definition of awesome. So after the announcement of a dinosaur-themed ride at Disney's Animal Kingdom, Dinomaniacs were eager to take a trip to Orlando. Originally opening as Countdown to Extinction, not to be confused with the Megadeth album of the same name, Dinosaur Story centers around guests traveling back in time to collect an iguanodon from the Cretaceous period. Thanks to some poor planning by David Hodges here, guests are sent to the exact day the now infamous asteroid wiped out the dinosaurs. Along the way, passengers will come face to face with some of the most voracious beasts to ever walk this earth. The ride has gone through a few changes over the years, but one thing that has remained the same is the main antagonist, the Carnotaurus. With its reddish hue, menacing teeth, and protruding horns, this guy is pretty much what you'd get if a T-Rex and a devil had a baby. At several points in the ride, the Carnotaurus comes within inches of the ride vehicles, lunging its teeth at passengers as if they were a Greek-style pizza with extra cheese, pepperoni, bacon, onions, garlic salt, and red pepper flakes with a strawberry melon iced tea to wash it down. Even worse, this dinosaur appears four times during the ride. I remember as a kid thinking the ride designers were intentionally trying to troll children. It pops up over and over and over again, and the ride's finale has it charging towards guests, it's an absolutely terrifying experience for children, but overall, I'd consider this the best dark ride at Animal Kingdom, providing the necessary thrills, spills, and chills a ride based on dinosaurs was meant for. Number 12. The Lava Monster from Tokyo Disney Sea's Journey to the Center of the Earth Tokyo Disney Sea is often considered to be the most impressive and elaborate theme park on Earth. Its incredible scenery and state-of-the-art attractions all contribute to an unbeatable dreamlike atmosphere. Its top-tier thrill ride is undoubtedly Journey to the Center of the Earth. Similar to Epcot's Test Track, this ride uses a giant slot car system to take guests on a thrilling adventure to the Earth's core. Based on Jules Verne's novel of the same name, Journey to the Center of the Earth features numerous elaborate set pieces. These include crystal caverns, glowing forests, and the Earth's molten core. Inside the core, Guests enter the nest of the lava monster, filled with molten rock and large bulbous eggs. But the monster is unhappy with guests entering its nursery. Soon enough, riders will come face to face with the monster. This large, centipede-like creature glows a brilliant orange-red color. It screeches and roars at guests, showing off its multiple legs and spider-like fangs. With the ride's height requirement at a mere 46 inches, there's no doubt this monster has given quite a few kids nightmares over the years. This advanced animatronic is only part of the awesome experience this ride has to offer. Number 11. Monstro from Pinocchio's Daring Journey Found at Disneyland in California, Tokyo, and Paris Widely considered the greatest Disney movie of all time, 1940's Pinocchio was incredibly ambitious for its time. Its dark fantasy story incorporated some truly frightening and disturbing themes. The donkey transformation scene in particular is still considered one of the scariest moments in any G-rated movie. Another memorable scene is the climax involving Monstro the Whale swallowing Pinocchio whole. 
In addition to the famous storybook Canal Boat's Tunnel, Monstro also appeared on Pinocchio's Daring Journey. Already an unsettling ride on its own, this experience ends with a bang. Towards the end of the ride, guests will approach a pile of rocks by the ocean. Jiminy Cricket warns guests to watch out for Monstro, when all of a sudden, the whale's animatronic head lunges out from the rocks. What makes this especially surprising is that before he attacks, Monstro's head blends perfectly with the rocks in front of him. With its large mouth and sharp teeth, it's needless to say this is one of the most startling Disney dark ride encounters in existence. Number 10. Madame Leota's Tombstone from Magic Kingdom's Haunted Mansion What can I say about the Haunted Mansion that hasn't already been said? This perfect balance of horror and dark comedy is one of the most iconic attractions in existence. Each rendition of the mansion has its own quirks and memorable moments, but for this segment of the list, we're specifically talking about the one at Florida's Magic Kingdom. Believe it or not, this animatronic isn't even on the ride itself, but is instead in the queue. One of the ride's most famous characters is Madame Leota. Though her story varies from park to park, she is most well known for being a floating, disembodied head who calls on the spirits to send a message from somewhere beyond. The Disney World version contains her tombstone, which can be viewed from the queue line. At first, it just seems like a standard headstone, but stare at it for long enough and you'll see the head of Leota actually move a bit. And every so often, her eyes will suddenly open. The design of this animatronic is so inconspicuous at first, the detail really makes it look like metal. But there's no doubt that plenty of tourists have been startled by Miss Leota. Compared to Disney's other animatronics, this one is relatively simple. But when it comes to being creepy, sometimes less is more. Number 9. The Giant Squid from Disneyland Paris's Mysteries of the Nautilus Disneyland Paris is considered one of the most gorgeous and engaging theme parks in the world. Like Tokyo Disney Sea, this park offers dreamlike themed lands and attractions to heighten your sense of wonder. In addition to its dark rides and roller coasters, Disneyland Paris also offers a few walkthrough attractions. Perhaps the most impressive is the Mysteries of the Nautilus. Like Journey to the Center of the Earth, this experience is also based on a Jules Verne novel. In addition, this attraction arguably features an even scarier animatronic than the Lava Monster. At regular intervals, the window opens and a small show is put on. Through the window, guests can see a large animatronic squid attacking the submarine. It lashes out with its tentacles and bares its beak, all while staring at guests with its menacing red eyes. What makes the squid even scarier is the illusion of it being underwater. Water is placed between two panels of curved glass, with bubbles being pumped through said water. This gives the squid the appearance of being underwater, despite the animatronic itself being completely dry. The illusion ensures those with submechanophobia can easily be unnerved by the squid, which just goes to show the talent of Disney Imagineers. Number 8. The Xenomorph from Disney's Hollywood Studios' defunct Great Movie Ride One of the most famous gone but not forgotten attractions is the Great Movie Ride. Originally opening with the park, this slow-moving tram ride took guests through some of the greatest movies of all time. Numerous classic films were represented with detailed sets, props, and animatronics. Some of the most memorable segments included Raiders of the Lost Ark, The Wizard of Oz, and strangely enough, Ridley Scott's Alien. There's no denying Alien is one of the greatest sci-fi films of all time, but the idea of an R-rated movie being represented in Disney World is truly bizarre in hindsight. Apparently, former Disney CEO Michael Eisner wanted to make an entire attraction built off Alien to attract older visitors, but we'll get to that later. As for the great movie ride, the Alien portion portrays the film's climax, where Ridley tries to escape the ship before it self-destructs. Once the countdown begins, a xenomorph will lunge at guests from the ceiling. Its inner jaw juts from its mouth, its skull is visible from its massive head, and its fabulously manicured nails reach towards the passengers. This H.R. Geiger-designed creation is always as bone-chilling as it is badass, and the animatronic perfectly encapsulates his work. Fortunately, despite the ride's closure in 2017, the Xenomorph would be preserved in the Disney archives. Number 7. Regis Philbin from California Adventures Defunct Superstar Limo In every discussion of the worst Disney rides of all time, Superstar Limo always takes the cake, and one look at a POV clearly says why. Originally envisioned as a high-speed thrill ride about dodging the paparazzi, the death of Princess Diana in a limo crash caused a sudden change in the ride's concept. Still though, Michael Eisner was interested in a ride based on Hollywood, and he wanted to cram it with tons of inside jokes. 
Unfortunately, what the public ended up getting was a dull, cheap, and undoubtedly cheesy ride experience. The ride featured corny caricature animatronics of various celebrities. Stars like Whoopi Goldberg, Antonio Banderas, Tim Allen, and Jackie Chan would make appearances to the amusement of, I guess whoever liked those terrible late 2000s spoof movies. But the creepiest celebrity by far is the late great game show host Regis Philbin. Now let me preface by saying Regis was a legendary game show and talk show host whose warm charisma will be fondly remembered. What he certainly was not was a bug-eyed, Botox-injected creep who flexed his money at you. The fact that he popped his head out from a doorway like Foxy the Pirate made him even more unsettling, and that permanent smile didn't help at all. Fortunately, this terrible attraction would meet its bitter end less than a year after it opened, and it would eventually be replaced by Monsters, Inc., Mike and Sully to the rescue. The general mechanics that moved Regis into view are now used to move Randall, and that's only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to reused animatronics from its predecessor, but that's a story for another day. Number 6. The Yeti from Animal Kingdom's Expedition Everest Upon its opening in 2006, Expedition Everest was the most expensive roller coaster ever built. At a total price tag of $100 million, this ride brings the majesty of the world's tallest mountain to Florida. With the coaster itself made by Dutch manufacturer Vacoma, this ride takes guests on a high-speed trip through the Himalayas. The ride story centers around a transportation system taking guests to the base of Mount Everest. Along the way, though, the formidable Yeti rips out the track, sending guests on a crazy ride back down. After a few drops and banked turns, the train enters a cave where riders will spot perhaps the most intimidating animatronic ever built by Disney. At 25 feet tall, this beast stands at the height of around three and a half Shaquille O'Neal's. Its skin measures at around a thousand square feet, and its fur weighs in at over 6,000 pounds. With the use of hydraulics, this hulking beast was designed to swipe its hand at the passengers as they pass underneath. It was truly an amazing sight. After about a year, though, a crack reportedly formed in the Yeti's foundation, making it impossible to operate safely. Disney officials have vowed to repair the Yeti, but as we wait, a strobe light is used to simulate movement. Hopefully one day the Yeti will be repaired. Number 5. The Horned King from Tokyo Disneyland's defunct Cinderella Castle Mystery Tour Like Mysteries of the Nautilus, this was another walkthrough attraction. On the other hand, the experience was significantly darker than the former. Taking place inside the park's signature castle, this attraction took guests on a frightening tour through the castle's dungeons, where they would incur the wrath of some of Disney's nastiest villains. The Magic Mirror challenges guests to a battle of good versus evil, where they will face off with Chernabog, a fire-breathing dragon, and the tour's main antagonist, the Horned King. This dude originates from the 1985 Disney film, The Legend of Zelda The Black Cauldron. Upon encountering him, he will give a dark, foreboding monologue where he informs guests of their impending dooms. This includes lines such as pretty disturbing. And here's a fun fact, both on the tour and in the original movie, the Horn King's Japanese voice was done by Shozo Izuka. Izuka would go on to dub the voice of Jamba in the Lilo and Stitch franchise, and is also the Japanese voice of Carl from Up, Nappa from Dragon Ball Z, and Dr. Neo Cortex from the original Crash Bandicoot games. The fact that a Disney attraction is directly tied to Crash Bandicoot 2 is my personal amalgamation of all things childhood. Number 4. Big Al from the Country Bear Jamboree You may be wondering how a character from such a family-friendly show got a spot on this list. Now, we have nothing against Big Al, and I'm sure he's a great guy to grab a drink with. In the context of the show, though, he can admittedly be pretty unsettling. First of all, the song he sings isn't exactly one you can hoe down to. Voiced by country musician Tex Ritter, Big Al's morbid, depressing song comes absolutely out of nowhere. The theater goes dark except for a single spotlight on Al, and then he sings. 
There was blood on the saddle and blood all around and a great big puddle of blood on the ground. As if that weren't bad enough, he gives a creepy laugh after singing it. <laughs> it's as if he thinks a cowboy's cadaver is funny. Fortunately, Al spares the audience from the rest of the lyrics, which read, A cowboy lay in it all covered with gore, and he never will ride any broncos no more. Oh, pity the cowboy all bloody and red, for the bronco fell on him and bashed in his head. Needless to say, these lyrics read more like a Billie Eilish song than one you'd hear in the Magic Kingdom. Add in his dead-eyed facial expression, and you've got the animatronic equivalent of Freddy Fazbear's grandpa. Some find Big Al's off-putting song darkly humorous, including myself. Still though, many park guests agree with how creepy Al is. YouTube user Winter Pantsu says, Real talk. This scared me when I first went to Disney as an 8-year-old. Like, I was so thrilled, and suddenly this happened. YouTube user Natalie Morris says, I saw this live when I was 5 and had nightmares for months. And YouTube user Wolfie Shade says, Creepy! Ah! Once again, we have nothing against Big Al, but it's hard to deny that his song has made more than enough people feel uneasy to make this list. Big Al, rock on. Number three, Hopper and his Black Widow army from Animal Kingdom's It's Tough to Be a Bug. 1998's It's a Bug's Life was Pixar's second feature film and further cemented the company's status as an animation juggernaut. To help promote the movie, Michael Eisner suggested basing a 3D show for it for Disney's newest theme park, Animal Kingdom. Located inside the park's centerpiece, The Tree of Life, this show actually debuted around seven months before the film came out, which makes it a prequel. The show's story involves Flick the Ant making the audience honorary bugs and showing them just how hard it is to be an insect. Several critters show off their survival skills, including a tarantula played by Cheech Marin, a termite played by French Stewart, and a stink bug played by a stock fart sound effect. However, the film's antagonist Hopper interrupts the show expressing his hatred for humans and their treatment of insects. Hopper appears as a full-bodied animatronic, and it really looks like a giant talking grasshopper is on stage. Those with orthoterophobia will certainly be intimidated by this irate anthropod. And speaking of anthropods, Hopper didn't come alone. In fact, he brought an army of female Black Widow spiders with him, or Latrodectus in scientific terms. These ladies drop from the ceiling on what look like extremely thin wires. The spiders bob up and down and move their legs, which makes for an absolute nightmare scenario among arachnophobics. Seriously, what were they thinking? This footage looks hard to look at, honestly, it really does. Hopper eventually tells the spiders to back off and leave the humans to himself, but before he can attack the audience, he's scared away by a chameleon. This terrifying show is still in operation. Considering its elaborate theater and location inside the park's centerpiece, it isn't likely to leave Animal Kingdom anytime soon. Number 2 the alien from Magic Kingdom's defunct extraterrestrial alien encounter. No Magic Kingdom show is more infamous or horrifying as this one. Originally intended to be based on Ridley Scott's Alien, Michael Eisner wanted to create an edgy attraction to lure in older park guests. However, after Imagineers objected to the use of an R-rated franchise, Eisner decided to drop the alien tie-in. Nevertheless, he wanted to make this show as intense as possible. After years of development and retooling, the show would finally open in 1995. The star-studded attraction would feature performances by Tyra Banks, Tim Curry, and Kathy Najimy. Best known for her roles as Mary Sanderson in Hocus Pocus and as the voice of Peggy Hill. The show's story centered around an alien corporation named XS Tech, showing off their teleportation technology at a convention. To test the machine, the company's chairman, L.C. Clench, wants to beam himself to the audience, but things go awry when the signal gets intercepted. Instead of the chairman, a carnivorous alien creature is beamed into the theater. This specially designed creature is like an insect crossed with a crustacean. This horned hellspawn has large wings, a heavy exoskeleton, multiple legs, razor-sharp teeth, a scorpion stinger, and... BIG MEATY CLAWS! The alien proceeds to escape the tube and devour a maintenance worker, and guests can feel his blood down on them. With the use of binaural audio on the seats, water effects, and air blasters, this ride gives the illusion the alien is breathing down guests' necks. In actuality, the alien never actually leaves the tube. It just sinks down into it while the lights are out to make it look like it escaped. 
In the end, excess staff is able to trick the alien into re-entering the tube, where it is blown up. Loser! You're a loser! The show was condemned by parents for being too scary for the Magic Kingdom, and its popularity would suffer greatly as a result. That led the show to close just eight years after it opened. It was later replaced by the critically panned and far less scary Stitch's Great Escape, but that show would also meet its end in 2018. Nobody knows what attraction will replace it, but if Disney wants to terrify guests again, they could always use the show building to screen cars too. Number one, the evil queen's hag form from Magic Kingdom's defunct Snow White Adventures. Snow White was the first ever feature-length Disney film. It took the world by storm in 1937, and it revolutionized animation as a storytelling medium. Among its most memorable elements is its villain, the evil queen. Jealous of Snow White's beauty, the Queen spends the entire film plotting her doom. In hopes of taking Snow White's title as the fairest of them all, the Queen plots to disguise herself as an old hag and trick Snow White into eating a poison apple. That plot serves as the focus of the ride. This ride resembles a ghost train more than a Disney dark ride. At various points, the Queen will pop out and offer the apple to guests, as her evil cackle echoes throughout the show building. The ride took place in near total darkness, with various jump scares and disturbing imagery scattered throughout. The witch is always popping out at guests, and when she can't get them to eat the apple, she flat out tries to destroy them. Upon reaching the dwarf's diamond mine, she tries making the mine cave in and running guests over with a minecart, before finally dropping a giant diamond on them. The latter scheme actually works, as passengers are greeted with a flashing light effect to represent being crushed by the diamond. Snow White herself never actually appears on the ride, as the intent was to put guests in her shoes as she evaded the witch. But do you remember the scene in the movie where Snow White gets squashed by a giant diamond? <laughs> Neither do I. Suffice to say, this ride's dark nature made more children cry than the time Fortnite faked its own death. By the mid-90s, this ride would be refurbished and made significantly less scary. Though both versions are now defunct, the original will be forever remembered for just how traumatizing it was. Special thanks to FastPass Facts for helping me out with this video. Animatronics are honestly up there with roller coasters as some of my favorite things to talk about. And if you love these creative masterpieces of engineering as much as I do, feel free to check out their channel through the link in the description. Last June, we talked about some of the scariest submerged animatronics out there. But there are just so many more of them worth mentioning. Submechanophobia, which is the general fear of underwater man-made objects, is still incredibly popular on social media. Just the idea of being in the water with these animatronics is enough to strike fear into even the toughest viewers. Recently, I conducted another poll with my viewers to rank some of the scariest submerged animatronics out there. And today, we're going to take a look at how they stack up as voted on by the fans. Number 10, Simbo Spondylus at Austria's Triassic Park. Jurassic Park may be a work of fiction, but Triassic Park is indeed real. Located in the eastern Alps of Austria, this family leisure park is rich in paleological history. This park was once part of the Tethys Sea, with its petrified corals and fossils dating all the way back to the Triassic period of over 200 million years ago. As such, this park is a goldmine for dino maniacs. Families can dig for fossils, enjoy a dinosaur playground, and feast their eyes on Simbo Spondylus, a Triassic period ichthyosaur and a real-life sea monster. All I can say is that this top 10 list is starting out big, because this one is so massive it can clearly be seen from Google Earth. The sheer size of this animatronic can easily intimidate even the most seasoned dinosaur fan, and the way it slowly rises out of the water makes it an epic sight indeed. There's no doubt this prehistoric dude has inhabited the nightmares of countless Austrian children. Still though, while you certainly wouldn't want to get in the water with him, its scale alone makes it one of the park's most memorable man-made attractions. By the way, special thanks to YouTube channel Taurus Presents for providing this incredible footage. Number 9. Wooly Bill at Ohio's Cleveland Zoo At 183 acres, the Cleveland Zoo is one of Northeast Ohio's most popular attractions. This zoo is home to one of North America's largest collection of primates, as well as many other memorable exhibits, one of which is the 50-foot Yaga Tree. This educational family exhibit is located in the zoo's Australian Adventures section. Inside this mock baobab tree is a snake slide and the crocodile cavern sinkhole. Here you will come face to face with a submerged and detailed animatronic crocodile. Known by zoo staff as Wooly Bill, 
This croc sits in a mock cave at the bottom of the tree. As you pass by, this croc will snap its jaws at you and lunge out of the water. The fact that he does it at random intervals can easily be quite startling for some. In fact, several park guests online remember being terrified by this animatronic as kids. YouTube user Weeders AJ says, quote, That thing used to scare me so much when I was little. Reddit user Ken6288 says, quote, I cannot emphasize how scary this is. And YouTube user Alex Dionysos says, quote, Used to hate that croc when I was younger. So if you've got both submechanophobia and herpetophobia, you may want to steer clear of this guy. Interestingly enough though, there aren't too many photos or videos of him online. So if you want to snap a rare pic for your Instagram, Wooly Bill awaits. Number 8. The Shark at Thailand's Safari World Found in Thailand's capital city, Bangkok, Safari World is the most popular open zoo in the country. In addition to its many animal exhibits and shows, the park also offers the Safari River Ride. Similar to Disney's Jungle Cruise, this slow-moving boat ride offers an array of animatronic animals for guests to take a gander at. This ride has all sorts of animals on display. Monkeys, crocodiles, elephants, a wild boar, and even a real snake that sits above the passengers. But one thing on this jungle safari ride sticks out for just how out of place it is. Towards the end of the ride, the boat will pass by a small but deep pool housing a great white shark. This shark will emerge with its jaw wide open and spray water from his mouth. And on a submechanophobic level, this thing is absolutely terrifying. The fact that it sits in such a small but relatively deep pool can easily make one cringe at the thought of being in the water with it. Plus, the fact that it gets so close to the boat is fairly unsettling as well. While it may not have the budget of Jungle Cruise, one can easily make the case that Safari River Ride is much more terrifying. Number 7. The Orca and New Zealand's Kelly Tarleton Sea Life Aquarium This aquarium remains one of the country's most popular tourist attractions and received the 2020 Traveler's Choice Award from TripAdvisor. By far one of the coolest things about this aquarium is its penguin exhibit featuring both King and Gentoo penguins. At one point, this exhibit also featured a dark ride that took guests through it. Passengers boarded enclosed snowcat vehicles and were given up-close views of the aquarium's many penguins. In addition to these adorable avians, the ride would also pass by a mock arctic glacier set. As the vehicles pass by, an orca suddenly emerges from the water with a seal in its mouth. This startling moment is made even worse by the orca's size. It really emphasizes how deep the water is. And since the room isn't that well lit, many passengers didn't see the orca coming. Realistically though, this is exactly how orcas act outside of Free Willy. Unfortunately, this dark ride would be removed in 2012 as part of a massive renovation. On the bright side, the dark ride was turned into a walkthrough exhibit, allowing guests more time to view and take pictures of the penguins. Number 6. The Water Dragon at Japan's Toei Kyoto Studio Park You may have already heard of Universal Studios Japan, but it's not the only media-based theme park in the country. Located in Kyoto, Toei Studio is a theme park slash film set hybrid modeled after an Edo period village. The set is rich in Japanese culture, and guests can actually observe the filming of period dramas firsthand. Think of it as the Japanese equivalent of what Disney's MGM Studios opened as. In addition, this park features a variety of restaurants, shops, and curios spread out around different areas. One of these areas is the Port Town. Everything seems scenic and peaceful, but within the water lies a fearsome monster. Every so often, a water dragon will rise out of the middle of a special effects pool. This beast looks like a cross between a T-Rex and a Brachiosaurus, and the design is extremely impressive. It then proceeds to spray mist from its mouth, all while dazzling park guests around the pool. For some mechanophobics though, the expressionless eyes and open mouth facial expression only add to this animatronic's nightmare factor. If you ever find yourself in Kyoto, see if you can pay this fellow a visit. Number 5. The Shark Chase and the Pirates at England's Drayton Manor Though no longer in operation, Pirate's Adventure was once a notable dark ride at Drayton Manor. This slow-moving boat ride took heavy inspiration from Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean, so much so that it actually has a few show elements that some may classify as flat-out knockoffs of the Disney attraction. There's even a scene where prisoners try to trick a guard dog into giving them the key to their cell. Does that sound familiar? But regardless, the ride as a whole was still enjoyable in its own right, and it did have some unique elements. One of which was a scene where a shark would chase someone in the water. Though you only see the fin, this scene is still pretty unsettling. 
the darkness of the room combined with the thought of actually being chased is enough to strike fear into the hearts of many. But this isn't the only submerged animatronic on this ride. There's also this pirate who stands in waist-deep water. His goofy grin, cartoonish facial features, stained shirt, and limited movement make him a strong contender for children's nightmares. Sadly though, this ride would be shut down around 2015 after years of dilapidation. And in 2020, some of the ride's props were privately auctioned off, bringing a close to this memorable attraction. Number 4. The Bunyip at Australia's Enomoga Wildlife Sanctuary this is by far the most obscure animatronic on this list. Located just north of the city of Albury, this animatronic sat at the now-defunct Itamoga Wildlife Sanctuary. Here, sick and injured native animals would receive care, and the public would be able to check out various animal enclosures. Guests could also check out a gift shop, as well as horrify their children at the Bunyip exhibit. As I've said before, the Bunyip is a water-dwelling creature from Australian mythology that comes out at night to devour anyone in sight. In my last Submechanophobia video, we discussed the more famous Bunyip attraction in the town of Murray Bridge. This Bunyip exhibit could be considered its sister attraction, since it operates in the same way. Guests would insert coins and watch the Bunyip rise out of the water, and after scaring the ever-loving hell out of children, the creature would sink back beneath the surface. Just like the one in Murray Bridge, this bunyip would deteriorate over the years. And at one point, the sanctuary actually decided to add a horn to it, which somehow makes it even more horrifying. As the years went on, this monstrosity would get more and more terrifying. And after the sanctuary closed down in 2012, it would sit abandoned on the property. Just the look at this thing really gives Foxy the pirate a run for his money, doesn't it? Number 3. The Kappa at Japan's G. Kawayama Park Yet another mythical creature on this list is the Kappa. This monster is a type of yokai, which are supernatural creatures from Japanese mythology. It is also among the most well-known yokai of all time, and has made countless media appearances. However, the backstory of the Kappa is so disturbing, I can't even explain it all without getting demonetized. So here's my careful explanation. In order to keep children from swimming unsupervised, Parents in ancient Japan created the Kappa story. This monster lurks in bodies of water, and is on the hunt for human souls. The way it does this is by sneaking up on swimmers and stealing a supposed human organ known as the Shirikodama. According to actual, real, not fake Japanese mythology, the Shirikodama holds the human soul, taking the form of a small ball that can be found in... And as if this wasn't bad enough, one of the only ways to defeat the Kappa is by no joke farting on it. Naturally, it was decided that a creature with such totally messed up origins would make a great attraction for a scenic park. Reportedly, Shiji Kawayama Park officials decided that such a terrifying creature would actually draw more people to come and see it, and they were definitely right on the money. This grotesque, highly detailed creature sits under the water, coming out every so often to terrify onlooking children. In fact, in several videos of it, you can actually hear children screaming in horror at its appearance. And considering this thing's backstory, can you blame them? The animatronic's appearance has changed several times. One variation has two smaller Kappas alongside it, and in another instance, the Kappa is actually seen holding the Shri Kodama against its tongue. If you see this guy in your nightmares tonight, I sincerely apologize. Number 2. King Kong at Germany's Serengeti Park This is by far one of the biggest and most intimidating submerged animatronics of all time. Interestingly enough, this is yet another zoo animatronic to make this list. This ride can be found at a zoological garden named Serengeti Park in the German state of Lower Saxony. While the park as a whole is mostly a zoo, it does feature a few rides. These include a Ferris wheel and Aqua Safari, a boat ride that takes place on a real-life airboat. Just like Disney's Jungle Cruise, it features both animatronic animals and a skipper who narrates throughout the excursion. However, one thing it has over Jungle Cruise is a special guest appearance from King Kong himself. Towards the end of this ride, the boat will approach a waterfall. Then, a massive animatronic gorilla emerges from behind it, looking quite pissed off. Its size easily dwarfs every other animatronic on this list. Those flashing, multicolored eyes somehow make it even creepier, and the fact that you're on a real floating boat makes the experience even more unnerving. On the other hand, you may be wondering why he's holding his hands out like someone stole his chicken parm sub. Well, interestingly enough, German manufacturer Hoos Rides has a flat ride called King Kong, which consists of a very similar looking King Kong animatronic that picks up a gondola full of people. 
so it's entirely likely that this animatronic was repurposed from that flat ride. Either way though, this gorilla is a big old box of nope for submechanophobics. Number 1. The Shark at Texas's Downtown Aquarium Heading over to Houston, Texas, the Downtown Aquarium is tucked in the middle of the city. Not only does it have dreamlike fish exhibits, but it also has a ferris wheel and a chance rides train ride named Shark Voyage. This charmingly detailed train takes guests through the aquarium's shark tank. Passengers will be able to get an incredible view inside the massive acrylic tunnel. But things aren't all peaceful and scenic. After exiting the tunnel, the train goes outside and passes by a small man-made pond. All of a sudden, jets of water burst from the pond and a voracious, bloodthirsty shark raises its head out of the water. While the animatronic is relatively small compared to the other ones on this list, the true horror lies with its design. It looks much more like a machine than the other animatronics on this list. Because the water is so shallow, you can actually see the mechanics that operate it. A big part of why submechanophobia affects so many people is the fear of being stuck in the water with these machines. These animatronics, with their moving parts and potentially corrosive metal materials, drive an honest fear into the minds of many. Plus, the terrifying, sharp-toothed, and bloody-jawed appearance of this shark only adds to how bone-chilling it can be for some. There's no doubt that this ride has raised a whole new generation of submechanophobics. But for me, I just love talking about these masterful works of engineering. But wait, there's more. Check out the top link in the description for even more submechanophobic content from my good friends at FastPass Facts. You can find both a fresh perspective on these machines and even more submerged animatronics that I haven't discussed here. Their channel is by far one of the greatest theme park channels on YouTube. And if you love animatronics, they are definitely the place to be. So feel free to check out their channel through the link in the description. It's been almost a year since my last submechanophobia video. For those new to the term, submechanophobia refers to the general fear of underwater man-made objects, including animatronics. Since my last two videos on these animatronics were so well received, I once again conducted a poll with my viewers to rank some of the scariest ones out there. So as voted on by the fans, here are the top 10 horrifying underwater animatronics. Number 10. The Kraken at Denmark's Jors Summerland the Kraken pretty much needs no introduction. This giant octopus has its roots in Scandinavian mythology and has made countless media appearances over the years. Appropriately enough, this Scandinavian creature is also depicted at Danish amusement park Jors Summerland. Among the park's seven roller coasters is a water coaster named Skadion, or Treasure Island in English. Built by Mock Rides, this coaster starts off with a free-floating flume section. Passengers are surrounded by detailed rockwork and theming, but perhaps the most notable feature is an animatronic kraken on the left. This large figure sits in a small pool of water, featuring moving tentacles and giant orange eyes. Plus, it's surrounded by the wreckage of a ship, implying that this guy is not friendly. It's easy to imagine this ride giving kids nightmares in that regard, and the fact that it sits in a pool of water can be unsettling for those with submechanophobia as well. The rest of the ride is a thrilling roller coaster with an exciting splashdown section to cool you off on a hot day, but the animatronic at the beginning is arguably much more memorable. Number 9. Fluffy the Shark at Australia's Dream World Yes, this shark's name is Fluffy, but his appearance is anything but. Imagine taking Universal Studios' Jaws ride and combining it with a topspin attraction. You'd get this unique experience. Built by Dutch manufacturer Vacoma, this flat ride model is known as a Waikiki Wave Superflip. Talk about a wacky name. This model is similar to a typical topspin ride, but instead of simply lifting and flipping passengers, one of the arms can bend to tilt the gondola diagonally. This makes the ride experience much more disorienting, and its movements much more unpredictable. As if this ride wasn't intense enough, riders actually dangle above a terrifying shark animatronic in a pool of water. This shark has huge, sharp-looking teeth, swimming directly below the gondola. Passengers would regularly dip downwards, coming within inches of the water. This gives the illusion they're about to fall in with the shark. Needless to say, this could give anyone a bad case of galeophobia. Sadly, the pool below has been drained, with Fluffy being completely removed. Supposedly, this was done due to the high maintenance demands of the underwater animatronic. Number 8. The Alligators at Florida's Epcot Alligators in Florida go together like peanut butter and jelly, red wine and filet mignon, Rob Schneider and unwatchable movies. 
And it's not just real alligators either. There are also a couple of animatronic gators at the most magical place on Earth. For this section of the list, we're heading to one of Disney World's most underrated attractions, the Living with the Land Boat Ride. This attraction is known for its ultra-relaxing ride experience. After a long day of walking around the park, nothing beats casually floating through massive greenhouses with lush vegetation. In addition to the greenhouses and the engaging aquaculture section, the experience starts off with a dark ride section. Your boat will pass through three different biomes, the dusty plains, the desert, and the rainforest. The latter of which features extremely detailed alligator animatronics that rise up from the surface of the water. These gators actually come pretty close to the boat. Even worse, the mechanics that operate them can be seen from above the surface, making them even scarier for those with submechanophobia. Reddit user of Angels and Angels described them as, quote, the definition of menacing. Reddit user Little Maid Cafe simply said, no, no. And Reddit user Slifer the Executive Producer said, I had a nightmare about these when I was a kid. I was right next to them, up to my neck in water, and my feet couldn't reach the bottom. They were snapping. The fact that seemingly simple animatronics can be so unnerving for some really shows how strong submechanophobia can be. Number 7. The Parasaurolophuses at Florida's Islands of Adventure Yet another Floridian boat ride is Jurassic Park River Adventure. Based on the Jurassic Park franchise, this attraction takes you on a river tour through the titular park. Things go awry though when the boat gets knocked off course, taking you through a containment zone filled with raptors, dilophosaurs, and a badass T-Rex. But for many, the scariest part of the ride is before this segment. About halfway through the course, your boat will come across a submerged pair of Parasaurolophuses. Try saying that three times fast. The first of these dinos will rise just above the surface, spraying water from his nostrils with a blank, open-mouthed expression. He just kind of stares at you as you pass by before sinking back underwater. You can tell how deep the pool is just from looking at this fellow, and it's easy to imagine falling in with this machine. But that's not all. An even scarier experience occurs immediately afterwards, when another Parasaurolophus suddenly pops above the surface. And it's even scarier if you get to ride it at night. Overall, you really have to give Universal credit for these animatronics. They may not be as famous as the T-Rex, but one can certainly argue that they're scarier. Number 6. The Swamp Creature from Nevada's MGM Grand Adventures Back in the 90s, Las Vegas was trying to develop a more family-friendly image. In a city known for gambling and debauchery, more investments were made towards kid-oriented attractions. Among these were the Adventure Dome and the now-defunct MGM Grand Adventures. Operated by MGM themselves, this movie-based theme park had a number of Hollywood-inspired attractions, one of which was the Backlot River Tour. Due to budget restraints, no specific movies were portrayed, with each segment of the ride being loosely based on various films. For example, instead of Temple of Doom, one segment of the ride was called the Temple of Gloom. In addition, another part of the ride was loosely based on the creature from the Black Lagoon. However, that film is owned by Universal and not MGM, so instead of paying for a license, MGM opted to call this segment Swamp Creature. In this section, passengers navigate a bayou-esque environment, passing by a wooden shack. All of a sudden, a monster lunges above the surface, scaring the hell out of guests on board. This animatronic was somewhat based on the aforementioned creature from the Black Lagoon. The monster had a fish-like face with gills, sharp teeth, and big bulbous eyes. And its scaly body featured webbed hands, webbed arms, and a swole six-pack. It's easy to imagine kids screaming in terror at a monster popping out literally right next to them. Sadly, the park would struggle with low attendance over the years. Eventually, the Backlot River Tour was removed in an effort to update the park's attractions. But thankfully, this attraction has been documented and we can all marvel at how cheesy and submechanophobia inducing this swamp monster was. Number 5. The Hippopotamus from Germany's Phantasialand Though it's now known for its many amazing roller coasters, Phantasialand was once a very different park in its early days. The park focused more on elaborately themed slow-moving attractions, one of which was a boat ride named Vikingor Bootsfahrt, aka Viking Boat Trip in English. 
As its name implied, this attraction was themed to Vikings. In addition to a dark ride segment with Viking set pieces, there was also an outdoor portion that closely resembled Disney's Jungle Cruise. Jungle Cruise knockoffs are quite common in Europe, but in this instance, Viking Boat Trip manages to outdo the original's fear factor. While the original Jungle Cruise features submerged hippos, the hippos on Viking Boat Trip are much more unsettling, with the murky water making it hard to see them coming. Even worse, the animatronics weren't as well kept as the ones on Jungle Cruise, and they would look increasingly dilapidated over the years. This photo shows a rather decayed looking hippo with algae growing inside of its mouth. It's a grimy and fairly unnerving sight. Eventually, this ride would meet its bitter end in the late 90s. It was eventually replaced by Vacobato, an interactive boat ride. However, its replacement wasn't built until a decade after it closed. The thought of this ride and its animatronics being abandoned for 10 years is simply chilling to think about. Number 4. The Giant Snake at Ohio Cedar Point Cedar Point is arguably the most famous amusement park in the country. Its beautiful peninsula setting and grade A selection of roller coasters make it a must-do destination for thrill seekers. While Cedar Point is mostly known for its amazing coasters, the park recently opened a completely different style of attraction. Announced as part of the park's 150th anniversary, this boat ride is known as Snake River Expedition. This themed experience takes guests on a slow-moving river ride through the park's lagoon. The attraction combines live actors, set pieces, and a few animatronics. Throughout the ride, you'll encounter beavers, wolves, and most notably, a giant snake. Towards the end of the course, you'll pass by a small boat. However, this boat is under attack by a massive snake, with its large, scaly body coiling through it. Its tail slaps the water, and its head raises up to spray venom. The head itself wouldn't be that notable, but the way its body twists through the boat is sure to make those who are afraid of snakes cringe. Indiana Jones would probably faint on this ride, so if you're an aphidiophobiac, you may want to stay clear of this one. But if you're looking for an entertaining and charming boat ride, it's highly recommended. Number 3. The Billabong Bunyip at Australia's Big Banana Australia is home to a number of famous tourist attractions, but among its most unusual ones is by far the Big Banana. Built on a banana plantation, this park's signature attraction is a giant walkthrough banana. Believe it or not, it's just one of several Big Thing attractions across the continent. Back in the 1980s, the Big Banana was also known for its monorail. At one point, the track passed by a lagoon which housed yet another submerged animatronic. Inside the murky water, a creature known as a bunyip would rise above the surface, showing its face to guests. I've mentioned the bunyip in my past submechanophobia videos. This creature from Australian mythology comes out at night to devour anyone in sight. Like the hippos, the fact that this animatronic is submerged in murky, natural water adds an unnerving level to its appearance. Plus, over the years, it became difficult to maintain the animatronic, so it would look creepier with age. In 2005, the animatronic was shut off due to budget constraints. It simply became too expensive to operate, and it was left abandoned. Nowadays, it's still said to be sitting underwater. Just the idea of a decades-old animatronic sitting abandoned in muddy water is enough to frighten even those who don't have some mechanophobia. Number 2. The Crank Guy at Missouri's Silver Dollar City Silver Dollar City is by far one of my favorite theme parks. In addition to its absolutely stellar food selection, the attractions are equally amazing. You've got awesome roller coasters, a humongous cave, and an entertaining boat ride as well. This ride named the Flooded Mine gives you exactly what the name implies, a mine that is in fact flooded. This attraction centers around a prison mine that's inundated with water. Throughout the course, you'll pass by a number of scenes involving the prisoners. Admittedly, these animatronics aren't as detailed as the ones you'd see at Disney or Universal. As a result, some of these guys have petrified, creepy facial expressions. Among the most unsettling is the guy that turns the crank. This guy's face is constantly smiling, with his eyes wide open. Not to mention his gnarled, nasty-looking hand that's constantly turning a crank. The fact that he's partially submerged in water makes him much more frightening, knowing he's forever doomed to turn that crank over and over again. Still though, this ride is often considered to be a guest favorite, and it's honestly a blast to shoot at all of the targets scattered throughout the layout. It's yet another reason why I love Silver Dollar City. Number 1. The Cyclops' Eye at Germany's Belantis The story of the Odyssey has been adapted into countless film and television adaptations. 
This Greek poem even got adapted into an episode of Arthur. However, another adaptation exists at Germany's Bolantis theme park. This park has several interesting water rides, including one that takes place inside of a mock pyramid. However, another ride is much more frightening. Known as Fart de Odysseus, or Journey of Odysseus in English, this ride is based on the aforementioned Greek poem. The ride starts off with a scenic section that goes around the park's lagoon. It's a relaxing portion, but after a while, you'll pass by a statue of Poseidon before entering a dark tunnel. This ominous tunnel has no music, setting an eerie atmosphere. Then you'll hear several grunts and groans, and soon enough, you'll encounter the massive eye of the Cyclops. It moves side to side and lights up a bright blue, all while sticking out of the water. This eye won my pull in a landslide, and there's really no wonder why. Its massive size and placement in a dark tunnel makes it more than worthy of the number one spot, and don't be surprised if you see it in your nightmares tonight. In our last video, we talked about famous jump scare moments on roller coasters, but these moments also exist on plenty of dark rides. These scares throw a surprise twist at you, heightening your flight or fight response and giving you a good startle. To tell you the truth, there are so many of these moments on dark rides that there was no way I could include them all on this list. If I left out a dark ride jump scare you were thinking of, feel free to comment it down below. But with that being said, here are the top 10 dark ride jump scares as voted on by the viewers. Number 10. The Pop-Up Ghosts on the Haunted Mansion at Various Disney Parks The Haunted Mansion is without a doubt the most famous haunted house ride on Earth. Its blend of dark comedy and genuine scares is brought to life by detailed set design and an array of animatronics. Some of the more famous characters include Madame Leota and the Hatbox Ghost. But for this segment of the list, we'll be talking about a more startling set of characters. Specifically, these guys, known as pop-up ghosts, spring up suddenly from behind the scenery. These ghosts have changed in appearance over the years, sporting a variety of different faces and expressions. They're most famous for their appearance in the cemetery scene, but they have also existed in the attic scene. During the holiday season at California's Disneyland, the mechanisms in the attic are reused for jack-in-the-box jump scares, as part of their annual Nightmare Before Christmas re-theme. In the past, these ghosts would scream when popping out, though that was reportedly turned off a few decades ago for unknown reasons. Either way, there's a good chance you were once startled by these guys as a kid, but this is only the beginning of the list. Number 9. The Giant Rubber Duck on the Flume at England's Alton Towers Back in 1981, Alton Towers opened a log flume ride named Whitewater Flume. At the time, it was the longest log flume in the world, measuring at almost 3,000 feet long. Later renamed to just The Flume, the attraction would be sponsored by the Imperial Leather Toiletries Company in 2004. The logs were redesigned to resemble bathtubs, and the flume had a brief dark ride section added to it. First you pass by a bathtub sitting in the darkness with a rubber duck inside. All of a sudden to your right, a giant rubber duck appears with a loud quacking sound. The implication being that he's hopping into your bathtub. Not going to lie, this is one of the most adorable jump scares I've ever seen. Even still though, this duck scared the hell out of people. The fact that it was suddenly lit up in the darkness with a loud noise triggered a natural knee-jerk response. Eventually, the ride was removed from the park in 2015, being replaced with the wooden roller coaster Wicker Man. The whereabouts of this duck are currently unknown, and we here at Theme Park Crazy have been unable to contact him. Number 8. The Were Rabbit on Wallace and Gromit's Thrillomatic at England's Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Wallace and Gromit are perhaps the most iconic animated British duo of all time. In 2013, these two even got their own ride at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. On Wallace and Gromit's Thrillomatic, guests board vehicles that resemble Wallace's slippers and are taken through several scenes from the shorts and the movie Wallace and Gromit The Curse of the Were Rabbit. Towards the end, you'll enter a dark room, and all of a sudden, a large animatronic of the Were Rabbit appears right next to you with a loud roar. This guy gets pretty close to the ride vehicle too, and there's no doubt he startled children and adults alike over the years. Almost 10 years later, this ride remains in operation, and it's highly recommended if you're a fan of Wallace and Gromit. Number 7. Thing 1 and Thing 2 on the Cat in the Hat ride at Florida's Islands of Adventure If you've ever been to Islands of Adventure, you'll know it's home to some of the most modern, state-of-the-art attractions out there. The Cat in the Hat ride isn't one of them. As much as I love this park, this ride is admittedly pretty dated. Its set design isn't much to write home about, and to be honest, it's kind of unsettling. 
The cat animatronics look like something out of an 80s pizza place, and as for Thing 1 and Thing 2, they're the next subject on this list. At one point, Cat opens up a red box, and all of a sudden, Thing 1 and Thing 2 come sprinting out of it. Their movements are sudden and erratic, which has often taken many passengers by surprise. One hilarious TikTok even has someone screaming in terror at the sight of these guys. I'll put a link to that in the description. Number 6. The Clock Dragon at the Haunted Mansion at Pennsylvania's Knobles Amusement Park in addition to their excellent food and superb attractions, this park has a popular haunted house dark ride. Over the years, the park has done an excellent job maintaining this ride. Its props and set pieces are intricately designed as well. Though there are several jump scares on this ride, one in particular is especially famous among dark ride fans. Towards the beginning of the ride, you'll maneuver your way through a haunted house. After spotting a few creepy characters, you'll approach a clock. All of a sudden, a dragon's head pops right out at you. Even those who have ridden this multiple times are often caught off guard by how fast the dragon pops out of the clock. Plenty of time and effort went into this attraction, and it's well deserving of its glowing reputation. Number 5. The Truck on Test Track at Florida's Epcot Back in 1998, Epcot Center opened their first ever thrill ride, a high-speed state-of-the-art attraction named Test Track. Despite its high speed and bank turns, this ride is not actually a roller coaster. Instead of running on gravity, the track underneath powers the vehicle all the way through. It's quite literally a giant slot car, and the ride design is known as such. On this ride, you take part in a series of tests meant to measure your vehicle's performance and durability. These tests include handling, temperature, and terrain. Just as a side note, the original pre-show is pretty disturbing when you think about it. After selecting the test that guests will be subjected to, the host tells the technician to pick an extra surprise test. Apparently, she was hell-bent on murdering guests and casually selected a crash test. Pretty off-putting to say the least. When Test Track first opened, it had a much more realistic feel to it, with the layout simulating a roadway. About halfway through the ride, you'll undergo a handling test. Right after turning a corner, a large truck appears right in front of you and honks its horn. Just before colliding head-on with the truck, your car will swerve out of the way at the last moment. In its early years, this ride featured a spark effect on the side, making the swerve much more realistic. Unfortunately, this effect was removed, and this part of the ride isn't as startling as it used to be. In 2012, the ride was rethemed to resemble a more computer-based setting. The truck was given decorative flashing lights, making it look much less realistic than it used to. Don't get me wrong, Test Track is still a great attraction, and it's a blast to zoom down the road at 65 miles per hour. But to me, this jump scare isn't what it used to be. Number 4, the Hungarian Horntail and Aragog Double Whammy on Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey at various Universal Parks. Talk about a mouthful. Back in 2010, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter breathed new life into Islands of Adventure. Its main attraction on opening day was the revolutionary Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. This dark ride uses robotic arm technology to take guests on a magical trip through the grounds of Hogwarts. Along the way, you'll come across the Whomping Willow, the Dementors, and the next moment on this list. At one point, you'll come across Hagrid, who asks if you've seen a dragon around. The erratic movements of the robotic arm make it extremely difficult to see what's coming next. All of a sudden, you'll find yourself right in front of the Hungarian Horntail, who breathes quote-unquote fire at you. And as if this wasn't frightening enough, this scene is immediately followed by another one involving Aragog and his children. These nasty acromantulas hang from the ceiling, and you'll even come face to face with the big guy himself. Unless you're literally Hagrid, you're sure to find this scene disturbing. It's definitely an arachnophobe's worst nightmare, so don't forget to shout Arania Exime. As a whole, this ride is a huge success, and it remains a highly popular attraction. Number 3, The Anglerfish on Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage at Disneyland. Based on the iconic Pixar film, this attraction is an underwater dark ride. Most of the ride consists of underwater projection screens retelling the movie it's based on. Although there are sadly no underwater animatronics on this ride, there is still a frightening moment for those with some mechanophobia. At one point, your submarine will enter the deep, dark sea, with a few small lights scattered around. Then, the lights suddenly flash on, showing a vicious-looking group of anglerfish right outside the portholes. Imagine being a little kid and seeing these pop out of nowhere. With their sharp teeth, expressionless eyes, and underwater placement, these figures are arguably more terrifying than some underwater animatronics out there. 
since they're not technically animatronics, they haven't qualified for my past submechanophobia videos. Still, it's nice to finally talk about these fish. Number 2, The Evil Queen on Snow White's Enchanted Wish at various Disney parks. In previous videos, we've discussed the jump scares on Magic Kingdom's original Snow White's Adventures ride. While this ride is no longer in operation, there are still dark rides themed to Snow White. These exist in California, Paris, and Tokyo. Fortunately for adrenaline junkies, these rides have a famous jump scare that's arguably as effective as the old ride. After maneuvering more peaceful scenes, you'll enter the Evil Queen's dungeon. At first, it appears as if she is looking at her reflection in the mirror, but the moment she turns around, you'll see that she's actually transformed into the old hag from the movie. This effect is done with a separate figure on the opposite side of the mirror that rotates simultaneously with the hag. It's a genius effect that just goes to show how elaborate Disney Imagineering is, and it's one not to tell your friends about if you want to see their reaction. Number 1, The Carnotaurus Finale on Dinosaur at Disney's Animal Kingdom. You wouldn't think a Disney attraction would be one of the most intense and terrifying dark rides out there, but Dinosaur fits that bill perfectly. Originally opening as Countdown to Extinction, this ride takes guests on a heart-pounding quest to bring an iguanodon to the present day. Unfortunately, you've landed just at the end of the Cretaceous period, when the asteroid is just about to hit the Yucatan Peninsula. The layout is jam-packed with advanced dinosaur animatronics, with the most impressive of the bunch being the Carnotaurus. This dinosaur mix with the devil has been horrifying park guests for years, but it's his final appearance on the ride that makes this list. Towards the end of the experience, the asteroid is just seconds away from striking the Earth, with no Bruce Willis in sight. All of a sudden, the Carnotaurus comes charging right towards guests, racing towards the vehicle head-on. A strobe light adds to the scene's intensity, as does the alarm sound. The positioning of the Carnotaurus right above the drop also gives the illusion you're about to crash into it. Overall, this is a memorable, terrifying, and startling jump scare you can only experience at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Epilepsy warning for flashing lights and colors. Dinosaurs, aliens, pirates, Abraham Lincoln, all these animatronics and more right here on Theme Park Crazy. We've talked about theme park animatronics before on this channel. These masterpieces of engineering make an excellent addition to any roller coaster, dark ride, or other attraction. But which ones are the best of the best? For this video, I asked my viewers what the greatest animatronics of all time are. So as voted on by the fans, here are the top 20 animatronics ever made. Number 20, the alien from the extraterrestrial alien encounter at Florida's Magic Kingdom. Out of all the animatronics on this list, this is the one we know the least about. Nevertheless, we do know enough about it to tell how amazing and advanced it was. From 1995 to 2003, the extraterrestrial alien encounter was by far the most terrifying Disney attraction of all time. The ride's story centered around a teleportation demonstration going wrong. Instead of an alien chairman, a menacing monster shows up in the glass tube instead. Based on leaked behind-the-scenes photos, night vision guest video, and an official toy figure, we have a good idea of what it looked like. For most people, the design was anything but cute and cuddly. Packing razor-sharp teeth, large wings, a scorpion stinger, and big, meaty claws, this animatronic looked like something out of a Godzilla movie. Funnily enough, the 2000 movie Godzilla vs. Megaguirus had a similar design for its titular villain. The claws, the stinger, the wings, the face… You really have to wonder if Toho was inspired by the Disney attraction. Despite its closure in 2003, this ride is still fondly remembered for its intensity and intricate design. The animatronic was aided by effects inside the seats themselves. Binaural sound, as well as effects simulating the alien breathing on guests' necks, added up to make this animatronic feel alive, when in reality it never actually left that glass tube, it just sunk down into the bottom when the lights were out. The fact that they put so much effort into an animatronic you can barely see in the dark shows how Imagineers went above and beyond, and for that, you've gotta give them credit. Number 19, The Carnotaurus on Dinosaur at Florida's Animal Kingdom. Yet another terrifying animatronic, or rather animatronics, are the ones found on Dinosaur at Disney's Animal Kingdom. The ride's story focuses on a trip back in time to find an iguanodon. But this bonehead decided it would be a good idea to send you back in time to minutes before the infamous asteroid hit Mexico. This story leads to a high-stress, high-intensity dark ride with sharp turns and fast movements. 
and because most of the ride is in the dark, you're unlikely to see the Carnotaurus until it's right next to you. Funnily enough, a real Carnotaurus is vastly different from the one featured on the ride. In reality, a Carnotaurus is only slightly taller than an average person, with smaller horns and arms so tiny they make the T-Rexes look like bodybuilding champions. You can partly thank the legendary Imagineer Joe Rohde for this design. According to Rohde, he and his team wanted to feature some more obscure dinosaurs for the ride rather than the standard T-Rexes and Velociraptors. After choosing the Carnotaurus, however, they realized that the legs needed to be thick in order to support the figure's weight. In turn, the frame itself needed to be thicker as well to go along with the legs. The result was a menacing, thick-skinned dino with bigger horns, bigger arms, and a much more frightening appearance. These massive animatronics towered over guests and were no doubt a main character in children's nightmares. Though the animatronics haven't been in the best condition lately, they are absolutely astounding when they do work. And though the ride's future is in doubt with the upcoming Moana expansion plan, you can still check out this excellent attraction at the time of this video's release. Number 18, Jack Sparrow on Pirates of the Caribbean at various Disney parks. In 2003, Disney took a chance and based an entire movie off of their Pirates of the Caribbean dark ride. On paper, the idea seemed laughable, but the resulting film was widely praised by critics and audiences alike. The success of the film admittedly led to sequels that progressively got worse over time, but it also led to a notable change to the ride that started it all. The film's lead character Captain Jack Sparrow was added to the Disneyland and Disney World versions in 2006. Specifically, these animatronics were known by Imagineers as A100 models. First introduced on the defunct great movie rights Wicked Witch of the West, this variety of animatronic has a complex system of joints and variable speeds. All of these make the A100 much more lifelike, adding a whole new level of immersion to the ride. I can say from experience that when I first saw this figure, I seriously thought it was a live actor. And I was flat out blown away by the details and movements. Not all Disney Dark Ride changes are well received by everyone, but this is an exception. Number 17, Hondo Onaka on Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run at Florida's Disney's Hollywood Studios. Talk about a mouthful. Following the hydraulic A100 model and its successor, the all-electric A100 Plus, was the A1000 animatronic. The first one of these figures to debut in a Disney park was of Star Wars character Hondo Onaka. Debuting alongside the Galaxy's Edge themed area at Disneyland and Disney's Hollywood Studios, this animatronic appears in the pre-show area for Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. This extremely advanced figure uses what's known as a pancake motor to power its movements. No hydraulics are necessary here, and with an array of joints and fluid posing, this animatronic was one of the most recent innovations in Disney Imagineering. This is another animatronic that's often confused for a live actor, and just looking at his movements, it's clear to see why. This figure has a total of 51 functions, including 10 in the head alone. By far the most immersive feature is the bendable knee, a seemingly subtle feature that actually adds a lot to the figure's realism. Even if you're someone who doesn't know a lot about Star Wars, including myself, it's truly impossible to deny that this figure is a true triumph in engineering. Number 16, Kylo Ren on Rise of the Resistance at various Disney parks. This is yet another A1000 animatronic that portrays a Star Wars character, this time on the Rise of the Resistance ride. First opening in 2019, this dark ride has guests face off with the First Order. The engaging story that unfolds is brought to life with state-of-the-art special effects and animatronics. On the ride, guests will face off with Kylo Ren, one of the franchise's main antagonists. Once again, this figure features fluid motions and a wide array of movements just like Hondo Onaka does. But this animatronic has yet another immersive feature. Towards the end of the ride, the wall behind Kylo Ren gets blown away and he's seemingly sucked into space. The way his clothing moves as he stumbles backwards really gives the impression that he's being sucked right through that hole in the wall. This animatronic is a huge step forward in technology and ride theming, and don't be surprised if you see more like it in the coming years. Number 15, King Kong on Skull Island Reign of Kong at Florida's Islands of Adventure. Back in 1986, Universal Studios Hollywood introduced the King Kong Encounter. This segment of their tram tour took guests into a thrilling set piece straight out of the 1976 remake of King Kong. For the time, this figure was insanely impressive, sporting both a massive scale and a wide array of movements. 
Unfortunately, the figure was destroyed in a massive fire in 2008 and replaced with a 3D screen tunnel. When it came time to introduce a new King Kong ride to Islands of Adventure, it was decided to beef up the screen tunnel experience into a more complete attraction. While most of the ride does center around a screen tunnel, it does feature a pretty grand finale. At the end of the attraction, guests encounter a full-scale bust of King Kong himself. This massive, impressive animatronic is a worthy successor to the deceased Hollywood version. The texturing, facial movements, and overall fluidity make it feel like you're looking at a real-life gorilla. Just look at the way the nostrils and the mouth move. It really is the closest you'll get to encountering a real-life giant gorilla. Interestingly enough, this won't be the only King Kong animatronic on this list, so stay tuned. Number 14, Maleficent's Dragon Form from the Disneyland show Fantasmic. Fantasmic is undoubtedly the most iconic nighttime show at any of the Disney parks. First debuting at Disneyland in 1992, this show takes the audience on a trip through Mickey Mouse's imagination, all leading up to a battle against numerous Disney villains. The final battle of the show features Maleficent transforming into her dragon form. Originally, the design of this dragon left much to be desired, consisting of basically a dragon head on a stick with what looked like trash bags hanging off of it. Although the version at Disney World still uses this inferior design, Disneyland was given a new and improved version in 2009. This dragon much more closely resembles the one from Sleeping Beauty, and that makes this show much more epic. Towering at 45 feet tall, this dragon is also able to breathe fire, making her that much more awesome. Being able to see this show in person is an experience you simply cannot replicate by watching it online. And that's especially true for seeing this dragon breathe fire in person. If you're planning a trip to Disneyland, make sure you scout out a good spot to see this nighttime show. Number 13, King Kong once again, this time on Kongfrontation at Universal Studios Orlando. From a technical perspective, this animatronic may not be as advanced as the one on Skull Island, but many park fans argue that its utilization was even better. First debuting as an opening day attraction in 1990, Confrontation took guests straight into the 1976 King Kong remake. The story involved King Kong attacking Roosevelt Island, with guests being evacuated through the island's tramway. Along the way, guests came face to face with the massive gorilla. Unlike the one on Skull Island, this was a full body scaled figure, and you could see the forearms, hands, and lower body. On this ride, two figures would appear. The first swiped its hand at the tram, seemingly causing it to drop. The second one, though, seemed to pick up the tram full of passengers. The way the animatronic's motions were directly integrated with the ride experience made it way ahead of its time. Not to mention the fact that like its predecessor in Hollywood, this figure had banana-scented breath, which was a fun little addition. All of that said, the engineering prowess that went into this attraction is undeniable. Though the ride closed in 2002, it's still remembered fondly as one of the greatest defunct attractions ever. Number 12, the T-Rex on Jurassic Park River Adventure at Universal Studios Hollywood and Islands of Adventure. The original Jurassic Park movie needs no introduction. One of the biggest films of the 90s, this Steven Spielberg masterpiece inspired a global surge of dino mania. Interestingly enough though, this ride was actually inspired by the original book by Michael Crichton. Spielberg contacted Universal almost immediately after the book's publication with the idea to build the attraction. After years of development, the ride first opened in Hollywood in 1996, before coming to Universal's Islands of Adventure in 1999. This attraction consists of a boat ride through Jurassic Park itself. Along the way, guests encounter a number of advanced dinosaur animatronics, some of which inspire some severe submechanophobia. After a hadrosaur knocks the boat off course, passengers enter a raptor containment zone, which has been overrun with raptors, dilophosaurs, and of course, the almighty T-Rex. Just before the final drop, the T-Rex would swing out from behind the waterfall, baring its teeth at guests before the final splashdown. At the time of its debut, this animatronic was incredibly detailed, with smooth, fast movements and even her tongue noticeably moving. As the years went on, this animatronic's movements did become less fluid, but it's nevertheless a classic sight no matter which version of the ride you're on. Number 11, The Goblins from The Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal Orlando. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter is widely considered to be one of the most successful, popular, and elaborate theme park lands out there. Ever since its introduction to Islands of Adventure in 2010, 
This land has been drawing in massive crowds and plenty of Potterheads. A few years after its opening, the decision was made to expand the land by clearing out the Jaws ride in the neighboring Universal Studios Orlando and replacing it with a Diagon Alley themed section. This new themed area included all of the hot spots from the franchise, as well as a fire breathing dragon and a new roller coaster dark ride experience. Interestingly enough, these animatronics are not found on the ride, but instead in the queue area. After entering Gringotts Bank, you will see the Goblin Bankers, exactly as portrayed in the film series. The precise attention to detail on these animatronics is astonishing, from the hair to the facial features to the very subtle movements. They could have easily just put a bunch of statues there, but there are several of them in this bank, making it feel like you got sucked straight into the movies. Even better, the nearby Gringotts Money Exchange attraction has an animatronic you can actually talk to in real time. It's not every day that you could talk to a goblin while exchanging your money, but this is just further evidence of how undeniably amazing the Wizarding World is. Number 10. Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean Battle for Sunken Treasure at Shanghai Disneyland In 2016, Shanghai Disneyland opened to the public. Along with it came some of the most up-to-date and elaborate attractions ever built by Disney. One of the most acclaimed dark rides to open there was the new Pirates of the Caribbean ride named Battle for the Sunken Treasure. Unlike its predecessors, this ride is more directly based on the film franchise, prominently featuring Jack Sparrow. Being newly constructed, it also features newer technology and more advanced effects. At one point of this ride, guests will enter Davy Jones' lair and meet the villainous Octopus Man himself playing a pipe organ. This animatronic directly resembles his appearance in the film, and has every detail from the tentacle beard to the lobster claw hand. This figure is Hollywood CGI brought to life, and the voters agree the details are everything. The only suggestion I have is to put a locker full of used socks on the side of him. Now that would make the details complete. Number 9. The Bunyip Animatronic from Murray Bridge, Australia For the first time on this list, we're taking a break from Disney and Universal and heading to the rural town of Murray Bridge in South Australia. This animatronic may not be the most advanced one on this list, but it's undeniably a massive cultural and personal achievement in its own right. First built in 1972, this animatronic was the creation of a man named Dennis Newell. Newell wanted to promote the local area's Wee Rama Festival, which he sat on the organizing committee of. The animatronic itself portrayed a creature known as Bert the Bunyip. In Aboriginal mythology, the Bunyip is a man-eating aquatic creature that lives in rivers, lakes, and swamps. The Bunyip story was especially important to the Ngarrungarri people of South Australia. Known by this group of people as the Mulyawonk, the story of this creature was used to keep fishermen from taking more than they needed, as well as preventing their children from getting too close to unsafe waters. As such, Newell's project was something like a parade float to celebrate the local culture. Originally conceived as a coin-operated animatronic, this creature would rise out of the water and roar at onlookers before sinking back down. As simple as it was, at the time, nothing like this had ever been seen in Southern Australia. So upon its opening, the animatronic drew huge crowds and thousands of dollars. Ever since its construction, the Bunyip has proven to be an extremely notable tourist attraction. Later on in its lifespan, the Bunyip was renamed Bertha and given a baby. Though it had started to age into absolute nightmare fuel in the 90s, a makeover breathed new life into this figure, and it remains at Murray Bridge today. In recent years, the animatronic has received global attention among some mechanophobia enthusiasts, and has been prominently featured on social media as a terrifying underwater animatronic. Recently, the town of Murray Bridge celebrated the animatronic's 50th anniversary with Ngarangari representatives and authentic Aboriginal performances. The fact that this animatronic was made by one man to celebrate Aboriginal culture makes it especially noteworthy, and the fact that a small town figure has achieved this much fame is absolutely awesome. Number 8. The Cast of Cars on Radiator Springs Racers at Disney's California Adventure If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I've made a fair share of jabs at Cars 2. However, Cars 1 and Cars 3 are solid Pixar films, and the world that the animators built is well worthy of an entire themed land. Hoping to revitalize the previously failed California Adventure Park, Disney premiered the billion dollar Cars Land in 2012. This land's main attraction is Radiator Springs Racers, a giant slot car ride similar to Test Track at Florida's Epcot. 
Throughout the ride experience, guests will encounter full-scale animatronics of the car franchise's characters. These figures do an amazing job of bringing these characters to life, especially the animatronics of Mater and Doc Hudson. They even manage to make Hudson's bumper mouth move like in the movie. Some of the figures have projected mouths, but the more impressive ones are the ones with sculpted mouths. But for all of these figures, the time, effort, and engineering work put into them is infinitely laudable. These animatronics, along with the scenery and thrilling ride experience, make this arguably one of the best Disney attractions of all time. Number 7. Abraham Lincoln from Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln at Disneyland Yep, the man on the $5 bill has in fact made this list. Just like the man this animatronic portrays, this figure is historically significant. Shortly after the first audio animatronics were conceived for Tropical Serenade, Walt Disney wanted to go from birds to human figures. Disney had always been a fan of Abraham Lincoln, and had even recited the Gettysburg Address to his class as a kid. Disney originally wanted the attraction to feature numerous presidents, but technical limitations at the time made that impossible. Instead, he would end up working on a full-scale Abraham Lincoln animatronic for the 1964 World's Fair. In order to make Lincoln's appearance as accurate as possible, the face mold was created with the help of an actual sculpture of Lincoln's face from 1860. For the first time in a century, Abraham Lincoln would be brought to life in front of a live audience. The show at the World's Fair premiered to instant acclaim, with the most notable feature being the animatronic's ability to rise from its chair. For 1964, this was an enormous achievement. Imagine how many people at the time thought this was a live actor. The show would later open at Disneyland, where after several changes, it still operates under the long name of The Disneyland Story Presenting Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln. The original hydraulic animatronic has since been replaced with an all-electric one, but the original still exists in the Disney archives, as it should for being an important piece of animatronic history. Number 6. Jaws from Jaws the Ride at Various Universal Parks This right here is the king of all theme park submechanophobia. Originally debuting at Universal Studios Orlando and still operating at Universal Studios Japan, this animatronic is a crown jewel in underwater engineering. Originally opening in 1990 in Orlando, Jaws the Ride took guests on a tour around Amity Island, but after spotting a tour boat destroyed by Jaws himself, they are chased down by the famous Great White Shark. Initially, the ride debuted with a detailed and versatile shark animatronic. One unique feature was the way this shark interacted with the ride boat, seemingly dragging it across the surface of the lagoon. On another part of the original ride, the shark seemed to go underneath the boat before it seemed to explode into shark guts. This version of the ride was unfortunately too complicated for the technology to handle, and it constantly faced downtime. So shortly after the original opened, it was replaced with a more reliable rendition. The new shark animatronics were reimagined with the help of Oceaneering, a company that specializes in deep sea exploration. The result was yet another triumph in underwater engineering. The way the shark could surface above the water as fast as it did made for a much more terrifying ride experience. You really couldn't see the shark coming until it was right next to you. And there wasn't just one shark animatronic on this ride either, there were several of them scattered throughout the course, the most memorable ones being the shark in the boathouse and the sharks at the end. After biting a power cable, Jaws is literally grilled to a crisp, with sadly no mango salsa or red beans and rice in sight. There was even a burning shark smell to go along with it, though I don't remember it being that mouth-watering. Truly an impressive creation. As mentioned earlier, the Jaws ride in Orlando was replaced by Diagon Alley, but the one in Japan is still alive and well. So if you were a fan of this ride as a kid, a trip to Japan is highly recommended. Number 5. Sprulkis Boom at the Netherlands Efteling In yet another break from Disney and Universal, here is an extremely notable animatronic from Efteling. Officially named Sprulkis Boom, this name translates to Fairy Tale Tree in English. As implied, this tree tells various fairy tales to guests passing by. For a tree, he really does have expressive facial movements, and the engineers did a great job here. Out of context, you'd honestly think this was a new Disney attraction from the video. Just look at the way his lips move along with his eyes. The fine folks at Efteling are world famous for their a level theming, and they really deserve more recognition outside of Europe. The idea of an animatronic tree seems simple on paper, but Efteling really hit the engineering out of the park with this one. Number 4. Indominus Rex from Jurassic World Adventure at Universal Beijing 
In 2021, the Universal Beijing Resort debuted to instant acclaim from park guests. Among its attractions are the Transformers-themed Decepticoaster, a Kung Fu Panda-themed land, and a new Jurassic World attraction. This hot-on-the-scene dark ride features several new innovations in theme park technology, but the greatest one of them all is by far the Indominus Rex. While the aforementioned T-Rex is affixed to a swinging mechanism, the Indominus Rex actually appears to chase the passengers. Apparently, the dinosaur is actually hooked up to a rotating device, but you'd swear you were actually being chased on this ride. It's hard to put into words just how astounding this is from a theming and engineering perspective. Even besides the chase feature, the animatronic's movements are both fluid and precise, making it close to a real-life encounter with a dinosaur. Universal truly brought their A-game to this park, and even if you don't like the Jurassic World movies, you have to admit this is one incredible ride. Number 3, The Yeti from Expedition Everest at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Earlier on this list, we mentioned Imagineer Joe Rohde, while another one of his incredible creations for Animal Kingdom was the Yeti inside Expedition Everest. First opening in 2006, this heavily themed roller coaster was once the most expensive coaster on Earth, with a $100 million price tag. Adding up to that price was the elaborate Himalayan facade, as well as Disney's most ambitious animatronic at the time. This big hairy dude stands at 25 feet tall, or over 3 Sun Ming Mings. He also weighs a whopping 20,000 pounds, with a massive boom system needed to move his body. This animatronic made its debut to unanimous praise from Disney Park fans. The fact that such a massive animatronic could move so fluidly was a true testament to how much of a powerhouse Disney Imagineering is. Unfortunately, its ambition was eventually its undoing. Supposedly, the figure's massive weight eventually led to problems with its foundation, and in an effort to prevent catastrophic damage to the attraction, the Yeti's movements were turned off shortly after the ride opened. Unfortunately, the only way to fix the Yeti would have apparently required tearing a good chunk of the mountain out, since the animatronic system was said to be built into the structure. In the meantime, a strobe light was put in place to simulate movement. Disney hasn't commented on the specifics of why it stopped working, However, considering it's only a few seconds of the ride, it's likely that Disney decided such an expensive, lengthy, and complex repair was not worth the money. Regardless of its condition though, there's no doubt that this Yeti was still a praiseworthy achievement. Even if it didn't go as planned, the effort is still more than worth noting. Number 2, The Shaman of Songs from Navi River Journey at Disney's Animal Kingdom. From the record-breaking originals of the smash hit sequel, Avatar has proven to be one of the most successful film series of all time. In 2017, director James Cameron and Disney introduced the public to Pandora, the world of Avatar at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Opening with this new themed land were two major attractions, the ultra-immersive Flight of Passage and a new aquatic dark ride named Navi River Journey. This boat ride takes guests through the sacred waterways of Pandora, where various bioluminescent creatures are on display. Towards the end, passengers will encounter the Navi Shaman of Songs, who performs a musical act from beneath a tree. The Shaman was the first step up from the original A100 hydraulic models, and was known as an A100+. As mentioned earlier, this new model traded the cumbersome hydraulic system for a new electric one. This allowed for much more advanced movements than its predecessor. It was a huge step forward for Disney, and even still, this animatronic is said to have more functionality than even the new A1000 models have. While Honda Onaka has 50 total functions, the Shaman's body alone has 39 functions while her face has 42. That's 81 functions total, all leading up to the most realistic looking facial expressions you can find on an animatronic. And with the character's emphasis on theatric movements, it's no wonder why this figure is so highly regarded. This animatronic alone is well worth getting on this ride. Number 1, the Spider-Man Stunt-Tronic from the Spider-Man Stunt Show at Disney's California Adventure. A while back, Imagineers started looking into how to replicate human stunts with their animatronics. In 2018, they introduced Stickman, a seemingly simple robot that was able to perform acrobatic maneuvers in mid-air. To do this, the robot used what was described as a gravity-driven pendulum launch, along with carefully timed posing. From this, Imagineers were able to introduce the Stunt-tronics. These robots were designed to bring incredible Hollywood stunts to life that would otherwise be dangerous for a live performer to replicate. 
You'd expect something like this to be like throwing a Barbie doll into the air, but the advanced self-correcting system makes the figure's movements incredibly realistic. Like, probably more realistic than any other animatronic. The first introduction of this figure to the parks was the opening of California Adventures Avengers Campus in 2021. During the Spider-Man stunt show, Peter Parker demonstrates his web-slinging abilities. In an instant, the stunt-tronic is launched into the air on a string. Looking like a live actor in a Spider-Man suit, this jaw-dropping stunt show has received widespread acclaim, and it's clear to see why it came in at the number one spot. The fact that engineers were able to get the trajectory of a flying robot just right is… well, it's hard to put into words. But it's amazing overall. And you really have to give credit to all of the programmers, engineers, technicians, artists, and everyone else who made these machines possible. So if you've worked on these animatronics, or if you're planning on working on these animatronics, or even if you haven't worked on these and you're in the fields in general, keep up the great work. With the Five Nights at Freddy movie coming soon, I figured it was time for another animatronics video. And for the fourth year in a row, we're going to take a look at the wonderful world of submerged animatronics. So as voted on by the fans, here are 10 of the scariest submerged animatronics ever. Number 10. The Pirates on Los Piratas at Belgium's Belvoirde Pirates of the Caribbean is perhaps the most famous dark ride out there. In addition to inspiring a hit series of films that progressively got worse with each entry, the ride itself is among Disney's most iconic attractions. Wanting to replicate the ride's success, several European parks opened their own pirate-themed boat rides over the years some of which arguably lifted scenes directly from the Disney attraction. While some of these rides are still in operation, many have sadly closed down. One of these defunct experiences is Los Piratas at Belgium's Belwarde. With a ride system built by German manufacturer Mock Rides, this attraction first opened in 1991. Unlike the Disney attraction, this ride is based on a real historical event. Based on the Spanish colonization of the Americas in the 1600s, this ride follows a group of pirates as they attempt to claim the Mayan's treasure. Along the way, guests came across several animatronics. Though they weren't on the level of Disney, the technology was still pretty impressive in its own right. And two of these animatronics qualify for this list. One of them is a pirate that rises above the surface and spits up water, and another one is a pirate that attempts to climb out of the water only to be clonked on the head by a broom. As with other underwater animatronics, the idea of moving submerged mechanics is enough to send chills down any submechanophobic spine. You can even see what looks like a wire or a compressed air hose, honestly I'm not sure. Admittedly, this is a fairly tame pair of animatronics for those who don't have submechanophobia, but we're just getting things started. Number 9. The Hippos on Jungle Cruise at Various Disney Parks just like Pirates of the Caribbean, Jungle Cruise is yet another famous Disney ride. Whether you're at Disneyland or Disney World, you're in for a relaxing, pun-filled ride experience with mock wildlife. This ride has several iconic moments. Who could forget the bathing pool of the Indian elephants, the irate rhinoceros, or... This ride is most well known for its animatronic animals. Originally, Walt Disney himself wanted to use real animals on the ride, but the idea was rejected since real animals tend to sleep during the day. As a result, the ride experience uses animatronics to simulate an aquatic safari. Some of these figures are even in the water itself. These animatronics alone are enough to generate some serious submechanophobia, but by far the most iconic ones are the hippopotamuses. True to reality, these hippos are extremely dangerous and they can be found next to a decimated tour boat. These creatures serve as the ride's antagonists, attempting to attack the boat. And among submechanophobics, they are the most frightening, rising from the water with big gaping mouths. Under the surface, a mechanism raises and lowers the hippos, and the thought of being trapped underneath can serve as instant nightmare fuel, just add water. As if hippos in real life weren't terrifying enough, these robotic hippos are frightening in their own right. Number 8. The Pirate Skeleton at Florida's Magic Kingdom In addition to Jungle Cruise and Pirates of the Caribbean, the Magic Kingdom's Adventureland has plenty of fun things to do. One of the lesser discussed things to do is an interactive scavenger hunt named a Pirate's Adventure. Near the entrance to Adventureland from Frontierland, there is a small shack where you can start the game. Here you'll pick up a map and a small card. 
Using the map, you go around the park looking for various symbols. Once you find a symbol, you can just scan the card and the next clue will be revealed. Various props and effects are used, and each map leads to its own treasure. Right now, there are four maps, but usually there are five. The fifth map involves searching for a square-shaped jewel. On this hunt, the final clue leads to a scene where a pirate skeleton rises from the water holding the jewel. As of right now, this figure is out of order, but normally, the figure is found right next to the Swiss Family Treehouse and the Jungle Cruise's entrance. Its grimy appearance and the fact that it's a skeleton definitely qualifies it for the list. And it's well concealed by bubbling water before it surfaces, so you really can't tell how deep the water is either. As simple as its movement is, this is another figure you wouldn't want to be in the water with. But overall, it's a pretty awesome figure, and hopefully it will return soon. Number 7, The Giant Crocodile on Treno delle Miniere at Italy's Lunar Park. As of today, Lunar Park is the oldest operating Italian amusement park. Located in the capital city of Rome, this park has a rich history including several forgotten attractions. One of these rides is a heavily themed roller coaster named Treno delle Miniere, or Mine Train in English. Built by Italian manufacturer Pinfari, this coaster featured extensive rock work and a large-scale animatronic. Though photos and video of it are rare, it was indeed a fascinating specimen. This large crocodile ran on a track in a pool of water. As the train passed by it, the croc would rise above the surface and startle guests on board. Though I wasn't able to find footage of it fully functional, the size and scale of this animatronic are easily worth noting. And there's no doubt that it gave local children nightmares at some point. Sadly, the ride closed in 2008 after provincial officials closed the park due to safety concerns. While the park later reopened in 2016, the coaster sat abandoned. You can actually see the old animatronic on Google Earth from a previous scan, but sadly, no photos of it abandoned are known to exist. A truly mysterious entry to this list. Number 6. The Sea Serpent on Alibaba's Palace at Wallaby, Belgium Yep, another Belgian animatronic has made this list. And just like the other ones, this one can also be found on an indoor boat ride. Though no longer in operation, this boat ride took guests through several set pieces inspired by Middle Eastern folklore. Specifically, the scenes were based on A Thousand and One Nights. These scenes were brought to life with a number of animatronic figures, but only one was able to make this list. At one point, you'll come across a scene depicting a sea monster attacking a boat. Its large teeth, huge tongue, and bits of sail hanging from its mouth made this a rather intimidating figure. And the fact that he was partially submerged in water makes him a grade A candidate for this list. Unfortunately, the ride would shut down in 2012 and completely drained. All of the scenery was eventually removed in 2019 to make way for the Popcorn Revenge trackless dark ride. The sea monster is often forgotten about, and media of it is also pretty rare. So if you have any memories of this animatronic, feel free to comment them down below. Like what you see so far? Feel free to subscribe and hit the bell for new video notifications. If we can get to 400,000 subscribers by the end of the year, I'll do a video on the world's steepest roller coasters. Number 5. The Dragon at Las Vegas, Nevada's Excalibur Hotel The early 90s were a time known as the family-friendly era for Las Vegas. This era saw the opening of several hotels and exhibits which focused on family entertainment. At the time, the city was experiencing rapid growth with many families moving there. However, many of these attractions failed and faded into obscurity. Though the Excalibur Hotel remains a solid family destination on the Strip, it once had another one of these family attractions. First debuting with the hotel in 1993 was a live show named Merlin and the Dragon. Set in the moat surrounding the castle, this show started off with an enormous animatronic dragon. This dragon was situated on a track and had the ability to breathe fire. While the figure was undeniably awesome, as all dragons are, it was said to be a maintenance migraine. Just like the currently decimated Maleficent animatronic at Disneyland, this dragon was also nicknamed Murphy. Murphy's Law states that anything that can go wrong will go wrong, and that was certainly the case with this dragon. Despite these technical issues though, this show ran for over a decade before closing sometime around 2004. Interestingly enough, many of the show's elements still remain in place today. Though the moat has been drained, Merlin's hut remains on the property. Moreover, you can see the track that the dragon ran on if you look closely. 
Most notably, the dragon is still said to be under the walkway sitting abandoned. Number 4, the dragon on bamboo shoots at New Hampshire's Storyland. That's two dragons in a row here. Located in Glen, New Hampshire, Storyland is a theme park targeted towards families with small children. In terms of theming, there's certainly a lot of it, with elaborately designed attractions and a colorful atmosphere. Some consider it to be one of the best family theme parks out there. There's also a Chinese-themed log flume named Bamboo Shoots. A while back, this attraction featured a submerged dragon animatronic that sprayed water. In the 90s, this figure was pretty unsettling. There's something about the eyes that gives the dragon an unnerving appearance, though the vintage look of the video doesn't really help either. Later on, the eyes were changed, and while I personally find him adorable, many park fans said they were terrified of him as children. Eventually, the dragon was moved to dry land, most likely to make maintenance easier. Number 3, Carrot Tooth from the studio tour at California's Universal Studios Hollywood. For almost half a century, Universal's famous studio tour has featured a segment based on Steven Spielberg's Jaws. Today, this part of the tour features a shark animatronic that rises from the water and appears to defy gravity by popping a wheelie with his tail fin. Many submechanophobics already find this unsettling, but originally, the design was a lot more nightmare-inducing. Upon the construction of this segment, Universal officials requested that the shark should have big teeth like the one on the Jaws movie poster. The result was a surreal animatronic with giant white teeth shaped like carrots. Guests at the time found this animatronic to be goofy looking, but to be honest, the fact that it doesn't resemble a real shark makes it much more unnerving. The cartoonishness of how frightening it is gives it a what the hell is that thing vibe to it that doesn't exist with the animatronic today. After the release of Jaws 2, the animatronic was changed, losing its carrot teeth in favor of a more realistic looking mouth. And though it may not be horrific as it once was, it still remains an iconic section of the tram tour. Number 2, the robots at Russell Speeder's car wash chain. Yes, I am in fact desperate enough for new submerged animatronics to include that I featured ones at a car wash. You may not have heard of these animatronics before, but if you live in Nebraska, New York, or Connecticut, you may have been to a Russell Speeders. This chain of car washes not only offers unlimited monthly washes for less than $40, but they also feature an exclusive line of patented robotic figures. These robots feature moving heads and arms, spraying your vehicle with pre-wash before the soap cycle. They may not be fully submerged, but they do get pretty wet. As for the design, do I even need to explain why these faces are horrifying? Just look at them. You'd expect to see these grinning plastic mugs on a horror movie poster. Just imagine seeing one of these in a back alley at night. And keep in mind that I washed my car multiple times in one week to get this footage. This required me to get that monthly pass, and the people who work there probably think I'm insane for washing my car so many times in one week. You may be thinking, why on earth would you buy an unlimited car wash pass for the sake of making a video about robots with water on them? Well, maybe I've just lost control of my life. Number 1. Monstro at the Netherlands Efteling Efteling is without a doubt one of the world's most acclaimed theme parks. This park is themed to fairy tales, with plenty of whimsical fantasy attractions. In addition to some excellent roller coasters and dark rides, there's also the Fairy Tale Forest walkthrough attraction. This attraction, described as a living picture book, features set pieces based on a number of fairy tales. Such stories include Hansel and Gretel, Tom Thumb, and Pinocchio. Remember the scene in the Disney movie where Pinocchio is swallowed by a giant whale? Well here, the whale is replaced with what looks like a massive carnivorous goldfish. This extremely detailed fish sits in the water and is able to move his mouth and eyes. Just think about how many kids got nightmares about falling in and being eaten by this guy. Perhaps the creepiest part about him is the Pinocchio animatronic that appears inside of his mouth. Consider that a nightmare booster. In all honesty though, despite the voters declaring him the scariest of the list, I personally find this animatronic more awesome than scary. Efteling did an outstanding job with Monstro's design, and they've certainly earned their glowing reputation. Think about how much time and effort went into getting this animatronic, and the others on this list, to work. Engineering an animatronic is already impressive enough, but to get one working in water is an even more arduous task. And for that, you really have to give the engineers and designers major credit. Now for the bonus clip. Recently I visited the Magic Kingdom to get some footage that you saw for the Jungle Cruise segment. 
While I was there, I visited the Country Bear Jamboree for the hell of it. The audience there was super into the show, and to my surprise, they cheered Big Al like he had just won the Super Bowl or something. <laughs> wow. Clearly he has a major fan base, 